most rewarding and extended survival challenge ever is here, alone in the Arctic. Ten contestants must endure 100 days in the Arctic. The winner will take home a million dollar prize. While summer jobs paying hundreds a day are common, those offering thousands are rare. In these tough conditions with pesky neighbors, finding food is vital. Folks call alone in the wilderness a gourmet show. See how they handle food, smoking the prepared fish on racks. Seeing it makes your mouth water, boiling it in a pot is another tasty option. If fish isn't your thing, contestants must push their limits. They'll continually push beyond their limits, seizing this rare opportunity. Let's see what we can learn from them. How will they endure 100 days in the Arctic? Maybe next time, we could win that million dollar prize. The contestants are entering the Arctic now. Let's check in on Sean first. He's thrilled to be in the Arctic, feeling like the only person for miles. He's eager to explore, his boxes are packed with camera gear, a great vlog could boost his TV time, but those claw marks? It looks like his neighbor is a bear, and Sean's smile vanishes, he can't help but think he's upset the show's producers. He swiftly relocates, it's not that bear meat isn't delicious, he just can't afford the hassle. Sean maintains a brave front, but his steps are getting faster. Sean is a survival blogger who live streams daily. He demonstrates essential wilderness survival tools to his audience. A big fan of Alone, he applies every season. He has studied the experiences of past contestants and trains daily with the Arctic environment in mind. His main concern now is finding food, nothing else in the Arctic seems to faze him. He aims to demonstrate his survival skills on camera. To prove to his critics that he is the real deal, with no scripts involved. Though he says this, Sean secretly wishes for a script, at least then, he wouldn't have to worry about fighting a bear. He carries a bow and arrow for protection. He looks for a suitable place to build a shelter. Surviving here for 100 days means considering the neighbor's moods, and making sure resources are easy to gather. After some searching, he finds a good spot. Suddenly, he spots a wild boar by a tree. He quickly aims his bow and fires. Unbelievable! Sean hasn't even set up his shelter yet and he's already bagged a wild boar. Now he has to spend time cleaning it. This really troubles him. If it weren't for his small smile, I might have believed him. After some hard work, he successfully gets the boar meat. Soon, he can have a barbecue. I hope it doesn't attract bears. Next door, Joe isn't in a rush to build a shelter after entering the game. He carefully unfolds and refolds the top, believing the first shelter just needs to be good enough for him to lie down and rest. As a biologist, he's well-versed in wilderness survival and skilled at using natural materials to construct shelters. He aims to push his boundaries in the wild, using his expertise to confidently find food. Joe doesn't care about winning the prize, he just wants to enjoy the Arctic challenge and see how many days he can last. Joe intends to explore the surroundings. He hasn't been alone outside before and suddenly feels a bit lonely. He's unsure of the other contestants' thoughts but intends to stay a month to see how it goes. Suddenly, he hears a noise. It turns out to be a squirrel puffing out its chest. Joe quickly grabs a stone to give it a shot. After three tries, Joe finally catches the squirrel. Starting off with food lifts his spirits. Meanwhile, Sean has a meat rack ready but needs to start a fire below. The wood is damp, making it tough. Even with a fire starter, it takes a lot of time. Without fire, surviving in the Arctic is really tough. It might take until dawn to cook. Sean took some time to set up a shelter and stew the meat. After a busy day, he can finally enjoy it. Too bad he didn't bring any seasoning. Otherwise, he could make it even tastier. The natural flavor is still good. He dumps the leftover meat juice far away to avoid attracting bears. After nightfall, Sean lies down early, but the pot's noise makes him worry about a bear. If the pot is taken, he can't cook or boil water. He grabs his bow and steps outside, but his vision is limited. He can tell there's something in the bushes, and whether it's a bear or a wolf, it's bad news. Once he sees the pot is safe, he hurries back to the shelter. Sean feels his heart is about to jump out. He can't sleep soundly at night, any noise scares him. The next day, Gillian is busy setting traps for rabbits. Seven traps should be enough. She thinks spruce branches are edible too. She tries chewing one, and her expression shows how delicious it is. Whoever taught her that must be a genius. Suddenly, she sees something moving and quickly goes to check the traps. To make it through the night, you need a lot of resources and a strong mindset. She thinks she has a great attitude. After all, girls who smile often have good luck. She's a snow survival guide and frequently goes on remote adventures. She can handle the Arctic well but fears injury and hunger. Her husband, also a survival expert, wasn't chosen for the show. Unfortunately, he didn't make the cut. She thinks a couple's edition would be great. She missed him the moment she left. She hopes she has the strength to finish this Arctic challenge. Gillian didn't think it would be a rabbit. It was by the trap, waiting for her. The snare hadn't worked on the small rabbit, so she had to end its life herself. 
he regretted letting the rabbit suffer and broke down in tears. Maybe he should dismantle all the traps. Gillian held back her sadness and went back to cook. He thought this place was just too harsh. Despite his tears, he continued to eat rabbit meat. It was only the third day of the challenge. Roland went on camera to reveal his breakfast. Ants, they pack several times the protein of beef. They were surprisingly tasty. He suggested them to friends who want to eat without gaining weight. The best part is they're free and unlimited. Roland was quite happy eating them. He lives off hunting in the wild. His family never buys supermarket meat, he simply hunts in the jungle for what they need. Living off the land is just his way of life. If he wins the prize money, he's not sure how he'd spend it. His family is already very happy. Roland joined the challenge mainly to see how tough it is to live alone in the wilderness and to showcase his survival skills. He found bear tracks on the beach. They seemed to be a bit old. The best part was finding a bundle of fishing line. Roland can now try fishing. Food is crucial to completing this challenge. The water here is very deep, so there must be plenty of fish. She looked around to find the best spot, ideally a bay. Suddenly, a small wolf ran by, but luckily nothing happened. If she had a bow and arrow, she might have had wolf meat for dinner. If it had come closer, she could have tested her axe's sharpness. The shelter was nearby. We need to be extra cautious at night and set up defenses, like Sean, who sleeps clutching his horn every night with his porcupine meat nearby. He's scared of waking up to a black bear, so he doesn't sleep well at night. He tries to catch up on rest during the day. Food isn't an issue for now, so conserving energy is crucial. We've reached day four without any major problems. Joe even took a quick dip in the freezing water. After a quick wash, he immediately got back to shore and dressed up. The cold almost did him in. On his way back, he looked for something edible. So far, he's only found some mushrooms. No fruits, but he did see animal tracks. Joe grew anxious, realizing the tracks were fresh. Suddenly, he saw a black bear in the distance. The worst part was, it was heading for the camp, likely drawn by the squirrel guts. No matter what, he had to drive the bear away. He didn't want to be on a bear's mind constantly. He regretted not bringing a bow and arrow. Now he had to use the show's gear to scare the bear away. Joe rushed back to the shelter, relieved the bear hadn't come down. He feared the bear would wreck the shelter. Joe was constantly on edge, always wary of grizzlies. It was a dreadful feeling. Another day went by. Gillian woke up feeling tired, planning to work on the shelter over the next few days. For some reason, he felt unusually tired today, just chopping wood wore him out. He pushed through the discomfort and kept working. Adding more wood to the existing structure, there were still many gaps, so he needed to gather moss and other materials to fill them. It looked pretty good. Gillian had been working hard for two days straight, visibly weaker. I'm concerned he might collapse before using the shelter. Gillian, however, was quite pleased with his work. Satisfied with the warmth, he decided to gather more wood for entrance decorations. He toiled until day 8 to complete the shelter, which looked impressive, though he doubted its smoke ventilation. Gillian cooked the remaining rabbit meat, but his knees were in a lot of pain. He wanted to soak them in a bucket. He was struggling and missed home, wanting to vent to his husband, but it was too soon to quit. He believed he could. He felt he could last at least 50 days. Joe, however, was downcast, finding no joy in the wilderness. If my stomach wasn't growling, I'd just sit here until nightfall. I should check the traps. It'd be great if another squirrel came by. There's so much to do every day, but so little food to be found. Joe's body is growing increasingly tired. Having meat daily would make work much easier. I didn't find much along the way, but suddenly I saw something. Turns out the trap actually worked. A rabbit was caught in the trap, and it's a decent size. Finally, we can have a good meal tonight. Joe is at a loss for words. The trap next door also snagged a rabbit. What a fantastic day. He can't wait to eat rabbit meat. In such harsh conditions, Joe knows it's already quite an achievement. There's still a long way to go, but Joe believes they'll be fine if they maintain their current pace. It's only the 10th day. Sean is preparing to build a new shelter. Just looking at the area, you can tell it's a big project. So far, only a small part is done. He's already out of breath. If he had known, he wouldn't have built it so big. Sean keeps talking to the camera. He mentions how amazing the shelter will be when it's finished, though there's no one to see it. Recently, he hasn't heard any bears at night. Also, there haven't been any new bear tracks, so Sean's been sleeping much better. In his free time, he hunts with his bow and arrow. Hoping to catch another porcupine. Unexpectedly, there's still half a boat here, if it's not broken. He can fish offshore. If not, he can use it as a shelter wall. After a quick check, 
He thinks he can live underneath it and fill it with water for a bath. Sean really knows how to enjoy the wilderness. Next, he repeatedly fetches water and pours it in, then lights a fire to boil it. Sean isn't merely surviving out here. He's practically at home here. He strips down and gets into the water, enjoying it as if he's in his own hot tub. No one else thought to make a hot tub right away. Now he can relax and soak in warm water. It'd be great if he had some beer. For Sean, the Arctic is a breeze. Now he can plan his purchases for when he returns. Best of all, he can take a long vacation anywhere he desires. Xiao Yen believed surviving in the wild was easy and felt confident about winning. He intended to enjoy a hot bath every few days. He planned to grill some skewers to enjoy while soaking, which made him feel relaxed. Xiao Yen stayed in the bath until the fire died out. Now he could boil some water to drink, but unexpectedly, Xiao Yen's fire starter went missing. Moments ago, he had been so happy. Now he was feeling extremely upset. How could he lose the fire starter. Without fire, there's no way to survive in the Arctic. Xiao Yen looked all over, hoping he'd just misplaced it. He was utterly frustrated. He emptied the shelter and searched for a long time, but still couldn't find it. He had no clue where it was. Now he could only retrace his steps while searching. If he really lost the fire starter, Xiao Yen would have to go home and slap himself. Why did he take that hot bath? Life is full of surprises. That bath cost him dearly. Xiao Yen pulled himself together and kept searching. After hours of searching in vain, he couldn't even check the footage. No one anticipated such drama. Xiao Yen swore off hot baths forever. Some might wonder why he didn't try rubbing sticks together to start a fire. But in the Arctic, even if you rub your hands raw, you might not see a spark. Xiao Yen felt he was really unlucky. He didn't succumb to hunger or the harsh environment. Instead, he failed because he misplaced his fire starter during a hot bath, a mistake he'd never forget. With no other option, he had to call the show's crew for help. It was truly unfortunate. I had high hopes for Xiao Yen. If he had built the shelter, it would have with Xiao Yen felt he had disappointed his family. His exit was likely the most surprising and unfortunate in Alone in the Wilderness. The production team felt let down too. Xiao Yen hopes to get another shot if there's a next time. He's got the skills to win. The smile just shifted to everyone else's faces. I wonder how the remaining contestants will perform? Let's wait and see. Alone in the Wilderness started just 10 days ago. Sean had to leave after losing his fire starter. Now, let's check on the others. By day 5, Roland had already started collecting berries. Shaking them in his shoes makes them taste even better. He plans to store all the food he collects in an empty nest, so he can lie down and enjoy berries in winter. He believes he can fill it by picking everything close by. Just the thought makes Roland happy, but to thrive here, he needs to work harder on his shelter. He prefers to walk a bit farther, to find the right place. After some searching, Roland stumbled upon this gem. You see a heap of stones. But he sees stone walls, put some logs on top, and it's the perfect winter shelter. Today's goal is to stack the stones properly. It takes a lot of energy, he was already out of breath after just a little work. I'm really concerned he'll tire out before the house is done. Roland can only move the stones slowly, spending a lot of time and effort to place them correctly. It looks pretty good now, just waiting for the roof to be built. Roland is very determined. To complete this challenge, on the sixth day, Mark went to collect firewood and found fresh wolf tracks. He's anxious they might come to the shelter at night. With so much left to do, he hopes they won't appear unexpectedly. He's a retired veteran who often teaches survival skills. He learned many useful tricks in the military, which he thinks will be useful in the Arctic. His greatest asset is his mindset, he can handle any pressure. He's a bit concerned his son might not recognize him when he gets back. Now, let's check on the fishing. Fish are still swimming in the diving area. Mark landed four big ones this time. If he keeps this up, he'll have no problems before winter. He's very confident about this challenge, so excited he doesn't know what to say. He thinks he needs a bigger place to smoke the fish, so he's building a stove with stones inside. It's a big project. He had to keep moving and stacking materials, making sure the fire wouldn't set the shelter ablaze. Roasting himself was not an option. After putting in a lot of time and effort, he finally finished it, and it looked pretty good. Doing it in the Arctic daylight was no problem. He quickly lit the fire to test it out. Eating only fish was getting dull, hunting bigger game would be ideal. Fish pieces were laid on the rack, and you could almost smell them through the screen. He was tempted to rush over for a taste. Next door, Collie was happy. He'd caught a rabbit, which he considered very lucky. 
He was thrilled to find plenty of mushrooms nearby. He often traveled to different places. He was accustomed to wild living and had endured many tough environments, but the Arctic severity still surprised him. Collie believed his survival skills were solid and was sure he could last a hundred days, though he was a bit concerned about finding food once winter arrived. He aimed to stockpile food early on for a more comfortable stay. The prize money would be a fantastic bonus. He could then spend a long time traveling without worrying about funds, even though this challenge was particularly tough. Yet, he was set on finishing the challenge. For now, he focused on easier prey like squirrels and rabbits. He aimed to scatter traps throughout the area, hoping to spend minimal time checking them daily. With some luck, eating meat every day wouldn't be a dream. Watching him set up traps, it seemed he really wanted to place them every few steps. If rabbits could talk, they'd likely commend his trapping skills. After a long day, he could finally rest. The Arctic conditions were still bearable. He felt a sense of homecoming and knew that, succeed or not, he would return to explore this place again. This spot was ideal for wilderness survival. Suddenly, he saw movement. It was a pack of wolves. Fortunately, they were far off. He just hoped they wouldn't visit at night. Despite his nerves, he was curious to track the wolves and see their destination. However, they vanished after a short walk, so he headed back to the shelter to rest. He felt a kinship with the wolves, sharing their love for big chunks of meat and the thrill of the hunt. If given the chance, he'd love to grill them and see how they taste, but he hoped they wouldn't scare off the rabbits. Let's check on Cole. He's busy hunting squirrels. For him, it's as easy as drinking water. Finally, we have meat for tonight. I'll scout for more edibles nearby. Cole's been an archer for years. He often goes out hunting in the wild. Now, he makes a living by crafting longbows, and he has military experience. He's always kept himself in top shape, both physically and mentally. Surviving a hundred days in the Arctic is no easy feat but that's what makes it tougher. He enjoys testing his limits. Plus, being single helps him focus. It's easier to concentrate on the challenge. If he wins, she wants to travel and explore. After bidding farewell to her family, she quickly arrived in the Arctic for the challenge. Now, she has to clean the squirrel. The Arctic is truly unforgiving. It took her quite some time to adapt. Time flies in wilderness survival. After a bit of cleaning, it's almost dark. Although there's not much meat on it, it will definitely be crispy when roasted. He can't wait to cook and eat it. On the seventh day, Amos had been busy setting up gill nets. For him, life here has been a bit tough. The rocks are so slippery that he feels he might fall into the water at any moment. If not for the gill nets, he would just want to lie in bed and rest. He immediately went to retrieve the nets and caught three fish. They are quite large, enough to last him several days. If he could catch big fish every day, he wouldn't mind falling into the water. Amos has always lived in the wild. He knows how to find food and make tools. He often goes to remote places to train. Coming to the Arctic this time is incredibly lucky for him. He can showcase his survival skills to the world. Most importantly, he's great at handling hunger. He might not make it the full hundred days, but he's sure he can last two and a half months. Months. He aims to construct a sizable shelter and hopes to bag a big hunt. For Amos, being alone makes him miss his family a lot. He might quit the challenge because of this. If he wins the prize, he plans to buy a big house for his family so they can live better. Now, he needs to clean the big fish. He's concerned that the fish might attract bears and wolves disturbing his sleep. To his surprise, the fish is full of eggs. The fish is full of eggs, which are packed with energy. Tonight, I can enjoy both grilled fish and fish soup. I can also have fish soup. Amos is in a pretty good mood. Suddenly, I saw a wolf appear. I hope it wasn't attracted by the fish. I wanted to save some meat, but I'll have to eat it all tonight. Otherwise, I'll keep stressing about the wolves. You can see it following the tracks. It's way too close to the shelter. I need to be prepared in advance. Nearby, Roland is still working on his shelter. The chimney is nearly finished, so starting a fire here shouldn't be a problem. Everything's going well. Now, I need to gather wood for the roof. Chopping down trees is already exhausting. Thinking about carrying them later, Roland finds it really tough. His shelter should be the best, right? Hauling even one log is exhausting, and I still need four or five more to stay comfortable this winter. I can't hold back on energy. After a long day, I've just finished the frame. It looks pretty good so far. In a few more days, it should be ready to move in. Would you build a shelter like this? Corey has been at North Creek for eight days. He wastes a lot of time every day just boiling water, thinking about how he could drink water anytime at home. It's really tough here. The frame of the shelter is actually done, but it still needs a lot of materials. He can only finish a small part each day. There are just too many things to do. Surviving alone in the wild is really stressful. Corey's building speed isn't fast. He's stuffing moss into every gap. Finishing one wall a day is good enough. Koi initially aimed for a small shelter. 
but it ended up being this big. Luckily, the nearby wood is easy to chop and carry. Even so, there are still unexpected issues. His knee feels like it's been hit. He can barely stand up, but it really hurts. Despite this, he insists on carrying the wood back and continues building the shelter. First, he puts the waterproof cloth on top, then weighs it down with spruce branches. He injured his knee in the army and isn't sure if it's acting up now. Although it hurts a bit, he still insists on finishing it. What would normally take a few days? Cory managed to finish in one day. He can move in later. Cory is resting in the shelter. Although he knows it's time to build a winter shelter, his body just doesn't want to move. He wonders how the show chose this location. He spent ages looking but couldn't find a good spot. Finally, he settled for a place by the cliff, even though it's a bit far. But it's still an improvement. Cory pushed through his exhaustion. Flat areas are scarce here. He has to put in a lot of effort on the ground, which tires him out just thinking about it. While adjusting the shelter, he gathers materials. His main worry is the weather. He's unsure if it will get windy and fears waking up to find the top blown away. The wind was tougher than he thought. Cory had a hard time finishing it, and the result looked a bit rough. The wind is only going to get worse. Cory needs to find a way to block it. He spent the entire day working on the shelter. Next door, Mark's shelter is much better. He can even make fish head soup. He's living quite comfortably. Surviving in the wild should be like Mark, eating and drinking well. His fish trap exceeded expectations, providing plenty of fish. The burden of survival eased up. Mark's eager to hunt for meat since eating fish daily will get dull. One section of the shelter still needs finishing, but it's pretty simple. Just lay down five logs, put up fences and crossbars outside. Finally, you fill it with spruce branches. It was done in no time, and the quality is quite good. No need to worry about break-ins, it looks solid. Now he can light a fire and relax. These smoked fish will last for weeks. While Mark was daydreaming, he suddenly heard a noise. He didn't stop to figure out the noise. Instead, he braced himself and went out, finding a black bear wandering around. Although it wasn't heading towards the shelter, for safety's sake, Mark had to drive the bear to another area. The fish likely drew the bear in, but with the wind on his side, Mark doesn't need to worry about it catching the scent. However, the bear ran too fast. Mark couldn't find it. After searching carefully, he had to give up. He can't guarantee the shelter's safety with the bear around. He needs to solve this quickly. Mark tried to make some noise to attract it. Can anyone guess what sound he's making? He walked around for a bit, but didn't spot the bear. I hope it doesn't show up tonight. On day 10, Cole gets ready to fish with makeshift wings. After some effort, he finally succeeds. Since arriving, he has shed a lot of weight. His belt holes are insufficient, so he makes new ones. If he stays a hundred days, he might need to add several more holes to his belt. For now, he focuses on finding food to slow his weight loss. He wishes he could hunt with a bow and arrow, and a grouse showing up would be ideal. But his knee pain is the biggest issue. His knee pain makes walking difficult, impacting his survival skills. If it doesn't improve soon, he might seriously need to think about leaving. Feeling down, he put all his hopes on the wings. He hopes to catch some fish. The knee problem is worse than he imagined, and he can't even lift the wings properly. He almost fell into the water, but managed to catch a fish, which slightly improved his mood. The fish was large enough to feed him for a day. He quickly brought it back to his shelter, processed it, and put it straight into the pot to stew. In a short time, it was cooked. Although he didn't add any seasoning, he felt it tasted great. He prefers it this way, unseasoned and natural. On day 11, Coley noticed the wind was too strong. His shelter could collapse at any moment, so he had no choice but to move to another place. Coley spent two days finding a spot and three days building it. Now he has to move again, which consumes a lot of energy. Had he known this would happen, he wouldn't have built it. The nearby ground is poor. Must he go even further? Coley wrestled with this choice for a while but opted to find food first. The rocks are very steep, one wrong step could break his leg. Then, he spotted something in a crevice and quickly used his bow and arrow. No one expected it to be a porcupine. Coley was overjoyed and quickly shot a few more arrows. The porcupine lay there, giving up the struggle. Coley immediately went in to grab it. It wasn't very big, but he was quite satisfied to have some meat. He said he didn't like hunting, but his hands didn't shake at all when shooting. He quickly cleaned the porcupine. Coley didn't waste any fat, putting it all into the pot. He threw the inedible parts far away, not wanting to attract bears. He aimed to make a hat or something warm from the fur. The day's catch was decent, but the shelter was a hassle. Coley's knee was worsening, making walking difficult. He feared an old injury was acting up. You could clearly see a lump, and even the slightest movement caused severe pain. Coley knew he couldn't continue. 
No matter how sturdy his shelter or plentiful his food, his knee wouldn't heal. Worse yet, he had a slight fever. He couldn't sleep all night, and by dawn, things had gotten worse. Unfortunately, he had no choice but to quit the challenge. Had his knee not been injured, he believed he could have finished the challenge. The show's crew soon arrived to take Coley to the hospital. They hadn't anticipated this and had already set up for Coley to be examined at the hospital. Hopefully, his knee will improve. Now, just eight contestants remain. Who do you think will finish the 100-day challenge? By day eight. Yua is so bored that she's explaining to the camera how to join the show. First, sign up on the official website. Share all your survival experience. If the producers like you, they'll call you for a medical check. After training, they'll send you to the challenge. Yua grew up in South Africa, so wilderness survival is like a game to her. She used to go on adventures with the local tribes, learning many traditional hunting skills and trying all sorts of exotic foods. She started her own survival school, inviting friends to join in, if she wins. She plans to open more schools to teach survival skills to everyone, but she does miss living with her family. Now, she's grabbing her bow and arrow to hunt for food, aiming for a squirrel or rabbit. On the way, she notices moose tracks. There are plenty of tracks. If she can hunt a moose, food won't be a concern for a while. Soon, Yua comes across some moose droppings. They feel very fresh, but something seems off. They look more like bison droppings, which taste much better than moose. Just as Yua is thinking of following the tracks, she finds the bison lying there, but all the meat is gone. It must have been recent. The wolves here are fierce, so she'll need to be cautious at night. For now, she can only take some bones back. Maybe she can get something to eat from them. On day 9 of the challenge, Jillian looks clumsy, even cutting his hand while fishing. He seems pretty inexperienced, and I worry his students might lose confidence. Fishing's not working out for him. The traps aren't working as well as he expected. They've only managed to catch a few rabbits so far. He's puzzled about why. Since arriving, his health has clearly declined. After many failed attempts at catching anything, he ups to rest in his shelter. He decides to grab his gear and explore, hoping to find a resource-rich spot. Meanwhile, let's see what Jis is doing. He has already built his shelter, and it looks pretty good. He even has the time to comb his hair. You'd think he was on vacation, given how relaxed he looks. Jis hunts for food daily, but has only bagged a squirrel and a grouse. Why they haven't been shown is a mystery. That's something to ask the production team. Jis thinks the resources are limited here. He's been surviving in the wild with his dad since childhood. He's got a ton of survival skills. Daily, he's crafting tools or exploring. Let's go, go, on, go. go, go. <laughs> he's living quite comfortably. He joined the challenge purely to test himself. Winning the prize money would be nice, but he misses his family. He hopes to showcase his skills on camera. After half a day of wandering, Jis stumbled upon moose dung everywhere. Hunting a moose might not win him the prize. But at least he could make it to the later stages. Just then, he heard a squirrel. Moose were a long shot, squirrels were more realistic. He grabbed his bow, aimed, and fired. Got him, got him, got him. Easily catching some food, Jis really thinks surviving in the wild isn't hard. He just needs his hands. He immediately took it back to clean. The inedible parts could be used as bait to attract fish. He hasn't tried the fish here yet. He's curious about how it tastes. Jillian searched along the coast for a fishing spot. The water here seems a bit deeper. She tried fishing here. If the catch is good, she might move her net here. After several attempts, she finally saw a fish. She quickly reeled in the line. I think I caught one. I think I got one. I think I got one, but it slipped away. This isn't working. Jillian was growing increasingly frustrated. On the 10th day of the challenge, she tried fishing again. She spent the whole day on it. If she doesn't catch any fish, she might faint from hunger. But reality is harsh. She didn't catch a single fish all morning. Already in a bad mood, she suddenly spotted a moose just 20 meters away, but she didn't have her bow and arrow with her. I could only watch the moose walk away. If I rush back to the shelter, I might still grab my bow and hunt it. But just as I was about to act, the moose vanished. I have no clue which contestant it went to. If only I had known. Jillian regretted not bringing his bow. He felt really down, missing out on fish and now losing the moose. It was so frustrating. He was about to break down, thinking he should just go home. Meanwhile, Joel was here, and I thought he'd break open the furnace and eat whatever was left inside. Instead, he hung it on a branch like a decoration. Seriously, isn't he worried about waking up scared in the middle of the night? And if wolves showed up, he had no way to protect himself. But Joel didn't mind, he was too focused on finding fish fins in the Four Kings. So far, he had only caught one fish and was quite unhappy about it. He needed to catch a few more. The Four Kings turned out to be more useful than he thought. He caught another fish. He thought this place was perfect for fishing. He could try fishing here in the future. 
After his excitement, Joel rearranged the nets and quickly cleaned the fish. Whether boiled or grilled, this fish would taste great. On the eleventh day of the challenge, Amos woke up and enjoyed the beautiful scenery. For him, doing yoga every day kept his mind and body in sync. The downside was, it made him hungrier. It's impressive he kept at it. Lately, he had been catching loads of fish with the nets and never came up empty-handed. He was pretty cocky about it. Amos caught another big fish with the net. He had a smoking rack to hang the fish on the tree. It seemed Amos would have to eat a lot today since there was no storage space and he worried about attracting wolves. So why not throw the guts far away? I think the shelter will be visited sooner or later. Amos was now thinking only about eating fish. It's a shame he didn't have any seasoning, the fish would have tasted better. After eating and drinking his fill, he settled in for his evening meditation. While he was missing his family, he suddenly heard a noise outside. Amos thought it must be wolves. The food was already set up, so they should leave after a while. But for safety, he decided to go out and check. He hadn't been outside long when he spotted them, which startled him. Fortunately, there was no trouble, and they vanished instantly. Amos knew he wouldn't get any sleep that night. On day 12, he woke up and began gathering berries to eat. Even though they taste good, his stomach keeps growling. No matter how many he eats, he can't get full. To survive the 100-day Arctic challenge, Joe needs a solid shelter. He's carefully working on the wood. You can tell it's a big project. I'm worried he might exhaust himself before finishing the shelter. He starts by setting up an A-frame. Then he needs to figure out how to lift the beams. While others focus on survival, Joe looks like he's settling in for the long haul. Just embedding the pieces takes a lot of energy. Ha ha! <laughs> he's very confident in his shelter. It's definitely the best among all the contestants. Joe should probably enter a wilderness construction contest instead. Being here might be hurting his performance. People will wonder what the reward is for all this work. The show might give him a consolation prize. Joe's energy is depleting fast. I doubt he can last the full hundred days. Unless he can hunt something big, he won't have the strength to keep working. It will probably take another four or five days to finish. By the thirteenth day of the challenge, Ewa was in a bad mental state. She was confessing her feelings to a cow skull. Maybe it's because she's been alone for too long. Ewa finds the skull quite heartless. She likely didn't expect the show to air this part. It will definitely be replayed at future gatherings. After her episode ended, Ewa felt much better. She noticed that C.I. Wang catches fish every day, so she needs a food storage spot. She wants to keep her food safe from neighbors. While it's easy to find materials nearby, chopping and carrying them is exhausting. She plans to make a ladder to store meat in the trees, thinking the neighbors can't climb up. She feels well adapted to the environment. As long as C.I. Wang continues doing well, she can surely make it to the end. Yua spotted the tallest tree nearby. She can build a storage platform there and enjoy the view. Just thinking about it tires her out. First, she uses an axe to clear the excess parts, mainly to prevent wolves from climbing up. The ladder works better than expected. It's very stable to stand on. Now Yua is a bit homesick, wondering how her family is doing. She's a bit concerned about her wife managing the kids solo, but she believes completing this challenge will greatly improve their lives. Ewa knows it's worth taking on this challenge. Now, he needs to chop the top off. He actually enjoys chopping trees. But then, mid-conversation. Not so interesting now. Huh? Almost sent himself off. Luckily, he wasn't hurt. Just needs to fix the ladder. To make sure he doesn't get hit again, he's using a saw this time. Should be better. Yuana thinks this angle is really hard to work with. It's not as effective as an axe, but at least he won't injure himself. After a lot of hard work, he finally got this place sorted. Just need to build a platform on top. The meat will be much safer here. I wonder if birds will leave the horse alone. Joel is happy with it and can now rest back at the shelter. On day 14 of the challenge, Roland is busy setting traps. If she's lucky, a squirrel might get caught. She can barely manage it without crying. She's concerned the squirrels might invade the shelter, so for safety, she has to set traps nearby. It's not that she likes eating squirrels. If I hadn't seen her not wasting even the blood, I nearly believed her. Roland mentioned that cooked squirrel is quite tasty. Seeing the squirrels for change. She believes winter is near, and they're running out of time to get ready. Food isn't the only concern, they also need firewood. Now they have to start stockpiling. Luckily, her shelter is almost done. Just need to finish the roof. It took about 10 trees to get it done. Harder than expected. The gaps need to be filled with moss. Finally, add waterproof cloth and branches, and it's nearly finished. Roland is quite pleased. Meanwhile, Jissy is busy next door. Busy making earrings to take home. Doesn't seem like he's here for the challenge. If his stomach wasn't growling, he'd want to make a few more to give away. It's time to check the traps. He didn't use any bait. So the success rate isn't very high. Jissy has a great attitude. Let's see how the next one goes. Yeah, baby. 
caught a fish. Almost let this big fish escape back into the water. It's quite a big one. Jissy thinks the Arctic is just a bit cold. The neighbors are a bit risky, but he's quite comfortable. Now, he'll fill it and smoke the fish. The leftovers go into fish soup. Joe's prepping winter snacks. If he catches a fish daily, then he could truly relax daily. He sampled a bit, and it was quite good. Life was improving steadily. On the 15th day, Joe woke up and stretched. He'd been getting up later each day. He hoped this would help his body adapt faster. After warming up, he immediately went to check the traps, hoping to catch a rabbit. Unfortunately, he had no luck, the traps were knocked over. Despite this, he did find a trapped squirrel. Feeling sorry for it, Joe quickly made a hook out of a branch, hoping to pull it out. The squirrel was still a bit scared. Joe slowly reached inside, hoping to catch it off guard. He made several attempts, but couldn't save the squirrel. Surprisingly, it freed itself. Joe jokingly cursed with a smile, realizing there'd be no thankful squirrel today. On day 16 of the challenge, Roland started trying to eat grass roots. The taste wasn't great, but it gave a sense of fullness. Fortunately, he found a debris-formed cave. He lined the bottom with moss and stored the grass roots inside. When he got hungry, he could take them out to eat. To survive 100 days in the Arctic, he needed to catch enough fish. This place was still too dangerous. He planned to move towards the rocks, so he could reach deeper waters. He needed to set up his traps quickly. He was starting to miss his family. Being alone here was truly lonely. Whenever he had free time, his mind would wander, especially when he was hungry. He really wanted to go home soon. He hoped these traps would be useful. As night fell, Roland's mood worsened. He didn't know what would happen next. I've never seen a contestant this unlucky. He catches loads of fish daily, but his stomach is so bad he can only eat moss. Catching rabbits would be a smarter choice. Everyone needs proper hunting skills. Don't move like a predator. You need to make the rabbit trust you. Pretend to eat grass until it's close enough to shoot. You can quickly grab your bow and take aim. The rabbit won't suspect a thing until the arrow is released. It then realizes its fate, reacting vividly. Just place the prepped rabbit into the pot to stew. No need for seasoning, just eat it plain. Your stomach will improve naturally. If you don't like rabbit, you can try squirrel meat. It's small but very tender, and it doesn't need seasoning. The natural taste is the best part. Doesn't this meat smell better than your chicken leg? If you can't eat meat, try the wild veggies on the rocks. It may not seem like much, but the flavor is incredible. Just check out his happy face, you can tell it's delicious. Which would you choose to eat? On day 17, Mark caught more fish. To celebrate having meat, he gave himself a haircut and suggested Tony learn the skill for future business. I must admit, his skills are impressive. He now needs to build a rack for the fish, given the sheer quantity. He's concerned the rack might collapse under the weight. Since food is scarce in winter, he's stockpiling now. He aims to ensure he has meat to eat daily in the future. Right now, Mark likely has the most food among the contestants. It's unclear if he can maintain this pace. With his storage full, he needs to build another rack outside. Mark is still a bit worried about attracting animals. He plans to set up an alarm on it so he can react immediately. Things are going well, but I miss my son. I even missed his first birthday due to this challenge. I was pretty down then. If I win, I'll make it up to my son with a big gift when I return. The rack's nearly finished. Just need to add more spruce branches and light a fire underneath, and it's good to go. Mark is quite satisfied with it. Now, let's check on the priest. He's getting ready to tattoo himself using bones and berry juice. Wow, isn't he afraid of getting an infection? For Keith, this is just routine. All his tattoos were done this way. No modern tools are used. He's all set to start tattooing. I wonder, won't this lead to an infection? Keith quickly finishes. It's a memento of his self-imposed challenge. He then dives into repairing his fishing net. So far, he's only managed to catch one fish and really needs the net to catch more. Without it, finding food will be even tougher when winter arrives. Spending extra time on this is worth it. His wife taught him how to weave the net. He's starting to miss his family. Here, he can only talk to the camera. Staying here too long can really mess with your mind. After the challenge, he plans to throw a party. After a lot of hard work, Keith finally finishes. But he can't set it up by the shore yet. The water here is too clear. He plans to dye the net to match the water color, so the fish won't notice it. Soaking it in some berry juice makes it look like buckwheat noodles. Will this really work in the water? Anyway, the priest brings the net back to the same shore spot where he last caught fish, confident it will work again. It would be great if he could go further out. Hopefully, there will be fish on it tomorrow. It's day 18 of the challenge.
Considering his shelter isn't built yet and it's far from the water source, each trip takes a lot of time. The upside is he doesn't have to deal with the wind, he's now focused on finding food. Since catching the porcupine, he hasn't had a full meal in a long time. Although his body is getting weaker, his mindset is still okay. As long as he can get food later, he still has a chance to complete the challenge. Keith hopes to hunt a big one. That way, he won't have to stress about food in winter. But nothing's shown up yet. Let's check the traps for any surprises. He hasn't hugged a rabbit in a long time. He set up many traps around. Surely he will catch something. Suddenly, Keith seems to see something. He's incredibly excited. Yes, the truth is, he caught a rabbit. It looks quite big. Carly thinks today is enough. She loves rabbits and can't go without them. She quickly cleans it up. Asterisk asterisk one trick is to process it by color separation. This method helps you get a full fur. Rabbits don't have much meat. Carly wasn't a fan of meat before. Since learning to hunt, she ventures into the jungle to find her food, using inedible organs as bait. Carly even performs rescue breaths on the rabbits. It seems like she's reviving them. You have to admire that. Moon, on the other hand, is even luckier, having caught two rabbits. Unfortunately, it wasn't filmed. No worries, he showed how to hunt live. Moon praised and observed him closely. Don't walk too stiffly, stay relaxed. Show the rabbit you're not a threat. When it's close enough, slowly raise your bow and aim. The rabbit will react like this. Dazed and bewildered, it drops. Watch for the twitching. Moon should really be an actor. Quickly clean the rabbit. Don't throw away the fur, you can save it for a coat. There's not much fat on a rabbit, just enough to slightly ease the hunger. For Joel, a rabbit should be stewed in a pot. He doesn't even waste the liver. No seasoning, just the pure taste is the essence of wilderness survival. Eating rabbit meat is quite satisfying. But who knows how long this will last. Mark still gathers other food even with plenty of fish. He just collected a pot of moss. It has no smell and tastes even blander. It's mainly to give his stomach some fiber. Eating fish daily isn't sustainable. He must vary his diet to avoid stomach issues and potential disqualification. Mark is quite helpless about this. Today, he can only eat plants to adjust, but hunting must continue. There should be some edible blueberries nearby. However, after walking for half a day, he only found bear tracks, which seemed large. The trail led up the mountain and appeared fresh. The tracks are likely from the past few days, showing the shelter's danger. He must secure his food when he returns. Hopefully, the show's props will help. At least he hasn't run into the bear yet. He might need to think about hunting it. It's day 19 and Mark woke up to find a black bear at the berries, which he didn't expect. He's really afraid the bear will come to the shelter after eating. He's not ready for hunting yet. Mark can't give up on the berries. After much deliberation, he chose to hunt the bear. Despite the show's warnings, he couldn't tolerate the constant threat. Mark swiftly headed to the bear's location. Can he manage to hunt it with just a bow and arrow? Mark has found a good ambush spot. When the bear arrives, he'll use his bow. This seems quite tough for Mark. Let's check on Keith. He's on camera again, asking if people think he'll catch any fish today. If he fails to catch any, he'll wash his hair while doing a headstand. If he succeeds, he'll enjoy a good meal. Food is even scarcer than we thought. Keith feels his body giving out. He woke up dizzy, but keeps pushing through the discomfort, holding on. So, no fish again? Keith will have to wash his hair upside down. For now, he can only eat these plants. Keith is considering giving up and heading home. The lack of food is disheartening. He'll just boil these plants and eat them. He has to shut his eyes and pretend it's meat to avoid gagging. You can guess how tasty it is. Keith hopes everyone can try it too. He calls it the Wilderness Prime Steak, a delicacy money can't buy. If Keith didn't look so pained, I might have believed him. Now, he just wants to lie down and rest. On day 20, Moon felt quite cheerful. She had an anticipated dreaming of a family dinner. She ate a lot of food in the dream and still feels a bit full. The only pity is that the dream didn't last long. Now she has to build a door for her shelter. Moon is concerned about the winter and if the shelter will withstand it. Making the door isn't hard, but the flies are really annoying. The worst part is one flew into her ear. You can imagine how difficult that is. She wanted to stick her whole finger in to get it out. Calling a doctor for a fly seems extreme. Quitting the challenge wasn't an option, so she had to use tweezers, which made Moon very anxious. She attempted to use a light to coax it out, but that failed. Then, she tried drowning the fly with water. She could feel the fly stop moving. Finally, she got it out, and she felt much better. It proves that many unexpected things can happen in the wild. 
Even a tiny fly can cause big trouble. Now she covers her ears with a hat, not wanting to go through that again. Let's check on Carly. She still has the energy to interact with the camera, seeing if anyone can outstare her. Oh, there's wind. Oh, I have to close my eyes. Work. After the fun, <laughs> it's back to work. Carly plans to make a clay pot. This kind of soil is perfect for it. Creating it is simple. She starts by shaping clay balls for later. To the untrained eye, they might look tasty. Now she can roll these into coils. Carly is very pleased with the clay. If it weren't for the challenge, she feels she could keep playing with it. The key to making a clay pot is to keep the clay moist. This way, it can hold its shape when fired. Carly finds this really useful. By stacking these coils, she can make a big bowl. Next, it's time to fire it. It took quite a while, but she finally finished the clay pot. It's a shame she couldn't add patterns. It would have looked even nicer. Still, Carly is quite pleased. On day 21, Keith feels down and considers quitting and going home. There's really nothing to eat here. If he doesn't catch any fish today, he'll have to eat more plants. These days are extremely challenging. He urgently needs food to regain his strength. Winter will make finding food even tougher. If he doesn't stockpile enough food now, he won't finish the challenge. Keith decides to call the producers hoping they might bring a pizza. Obviously, no one will deliver it. He still wants to keep struggling here. This place is full of traps, but none have worked. It's like trying to win the lottery. After checking all the traps and finding nothing, he finally spots a squirrel just as his starving and questioning life. Keith believes he still has some skills, but food is scarce. He quickly retrieves the trapped squirrel, the squirrel is tiny, almost bite-sized. With snow starting to fall, time to stockpile food is running out. He needs to find more meat. He cleans and skins the squirrel, but there's not much left. He stews the edible parts in a pot, finding the meat tastier than plants. Tomorrow, he can enjoy some squirrel soup. Things are finally improving. He's unsure when he'll catch fish next. Winter will only add to the difficulty. On day 22, Roland rises early to inspect his fishing nets. The area is eerily silent. He hopes to catch more fish to ease the food pressure in winter. He quickly reaches the nets. From afar, Roland spotted the fish in the net. Keeping this pace, he felt sure he could finish the 100-day challenge. If he could, he would invite Carrie for a vacation. They would love this lifestyle, if not for the hassle of fishing here. He even considered staying a day to get the fish from the net. These fish are huge. The rack might not hold them all. But honestly, if lifting them is tough now, it'll be harder when the surface freezes. Roland planned to eat one and smoke another. Who would have thought too many fish could be an issue? Roland figured that with 20 more catches, he'd likely win this season. Roland was getting more comfortable in the Arctic. But look at Keith. Even though he had squirrel meat yesterday, his condition hadn't improved. In fact, he felt more fatigued and doubted the squirrel meat. Now his stomach hurt badly, as if something was tearing inside. Keith forced himself to drink squirrel soup despite the discomfort. He believed more hot water might help. This wasn't the life he wanted, surviving on wild fruits and plants, which was pushing him to his limit. He thought hot water might ease his stomach pain, but it only made him vomit. Instead, it made him vomit. The squirrel meat was definitely a problem. Looking back, he wished he'd just stayed hungry. Stomach issues in the wild are very dangerous. It could get worse at any moment. Now Keith couldn't even drink water, feeling like he was vomiting stomach acid. After an hour of repeated vomiting, Keith couldn't take it anymore. He called the show's crew for help, asking for a doctor. He never imagined a squirrel would end his journey. This was too hard to accept. His main concern was an infection, which might need hospital care. The crew arrived swiftly to assess Keith. His state was worse than anticipated. Keith was speechless. He just wanted to get to the hospital fast. As he spoke, he began vomiting again. The crew rushed him back immediately. Let's hope Keith recovers soon. Now only seven contestants remain. Who do you think will complete the 100-day challenge? This season's alone contestants truly know how to survive, easily catching big fish and taking down rabbits. These are just basic skills for them. They even make slippers out of rabbit fur, 100% handmade and natural. If they sold these in a store, they'd make a killing. They can even make musical instruments. We used to just get by in the wild, but they're genuinely preparing to live solo in the wild. What essentials would you bring to succeed in this challenge? It's day 23, and seven contestants remain. It poured all night. The shelter's still damp, but it's way better than being outside. Good thing I grabbed the fishing net beforehand. Otherwise, who knows where the waves would have carried it. Losing the net would mean I'd have to quit early. 
Now Roland is going to check the situation outside. He hopes to set up the net again if the lake is calmer. If the water is a bit calmer, he might be able to force it into the water. But with the wave so big, fishing is impossible. The water level has risen a lot. The spot where he set up the net before is gone. He has to walk along the edge, risking falling into the water at any moment. Roland is torn about whether to go down. To win this challenge, he needs more food, which is currently in short supply. Relying on the river alone is too difficult. But if he falls into the water or loses the net, he might as well quit the challenge. Roland must carefully plan his next move so he ups to wait until tomorrow for safety. Meanwhile, the guy next door is concerned about his beard. He wants to try shaving with a small knife. I have to say, it works well, but I'm worried he'll cut his face. I wouldn't suggest trying it. He should focus on his shelter now. Joe's the only one still not done. The project is more work than he imagined. Joe looks exhausted from building. He can only add a few layers each day, and he still has to worry about food. I think he'll quit soon. Joe's already exhausted, but he still needs to check the traps. Since he first got here, he's lost a lot of weight. He wakes up dizzy every day, and takes a long time to recover. Joe needs to find a way to get food. If his shelter were simpler, he might have more time to hunt. But Joe still wants to finish his shelter. The good news is he caught a rabbit in the trap. The bad news is it was bitten. Joe was really frustrated, but he still brought it back to eat. He didn't expect things to be worse on the other side. There were rabbit leftovers everywhere. Turns out, it was just too full to finish. Joe realized it was the work of a fox. If it had been another animal, there wouldn't be so much left. A whole rabbit would have been ideal. Now he had another issue to handle. He lost the motivation to keep building the shelter. By day 24, Ewa crafted a unique item to track things. Most people wouldn't get it at first. She explained it was a fishing net, adorned with her children's and wife's names. Naturally, she included her partner, She Nyo. The most unforgettable recent event was a fly getting in her ear. She looked forward to recording more stories. For now, she was making a chair because sitting on the ground every day was uncomfortable. The structure of the chair was actually very simple. First, she made a tripod, then added the backrest and seat. She felt she needed to stay busy during the challenge, or she'd want to go home. Only those who have survived alone would understand how she felt. Ewa was very grateful for her family support. Without their support, she wouldn't be here. Once the chair was ready, she sat on it right away and felt extremely comfortable. Whenever she had a moment, she preferred sitting to lying down. Meanwhile, Roland was still struggling with the net. She was unsure of the current situation. To calm her nerves, she ate some fish. For now, there was enough food. She was concerned about not having enough food for winter. If she didn't set the net today, she'd need to find another way to hunt. The coast was definitely risky. Roland was ready to fall in. The water wasn't calm right now. But it was better than yesterday. She felt she could set the net now. She had to be cautious, as a small slip could send her tumbling. Roland struggled to set the net in the water as waves crashed against the rocks, making it tough. She was already regretting coming down and had to forcefully secure the net, putting in a lot of effort, just to barely secure the pole. This spot was really risky. She'd have to return tomorrow to check the net. Thinking about this made Roland feel helpless. She needed to find a better spot nearby. Then, she noticed something odd about the rocks. Upon closer look, it was a black bear. Oh boy, it likely hadn't smelled him yet. No wonder they had to carry horns all the time. Bears were definitely common in this area. Roland stayed completely still, worried the bear might trail him to his shelter. He really wanted to hunt the black bear. Bagging one would mean plenty of food for winter and almost guarantee his win. Had the bear not bolted, Roland would have aimed an arrow at its rear. Now, he watched from the mountain. The bear was probably in that forest, and Roland clearly wanted bear meat. He circled around for a better view. Few contestants would risk confronting a bear. Roland hoped to at least scare it off if he couldn't hunt it. He took a long detour to try. The problem was, the bear could walk too. When he arrived, there was no trace of the black bear. He seriously wondered if he was hallucinating from exhaustion. Could it have been a crew member he saw earlier? The campfire smoke still lingered. Roland hoped the bear would come to the camp on its own. He didn't want to take such a long detour again. Do you think he can hunt it? The camera then switched to Jillian. He was slowly getting used to the Arctic, but his hair was growing out. He chopped off his ponytail with a knife, feeling much better. It was time to check the traps. Although he had set many, they weren't very effective. Jillian wasn't greedy. Catching a rabbit every few days was sufficient for him. He had also set traps for moose, but as he walked, none had caught anything. This was not what he had anticipated. Despite not catching a rabbit, the abundance of tracks made him hopeful. He continued to look around for rabbits, possibly because he was hungry. Lately, he kept dreaming of big meals at home. Every time he was about to dig in, he would wake up, feeling even hungrier. Just as he was lamenting this, he heard a squirrel's call and quickly grabbed his bow and arrow, approaching cautiously. After a careful look, he spotted the rabbit. 
He shot an arrow straight at it. His archery skills were impressive, he hit the rabbit right in the throat. The rabbit was bigger than he had imagined, feeling heavy in his hands. Now, Jillian felt confident again. He swiftly cleaned the rabbit. The shelter lacked ventilation, making it stuffy whenever he lit a fire. The smoke was unbearable. He needed to adjust the shelter, or it would ruin his lungs eventually. I had to go inside to handle the rabbit. Doing it outside was out of the question, it's just too cold. The rabbit's still cooking, and my eyes are burning from the smoke. Guess it's time to fix the shelter. Day 25 of the challenge. Even with the wind, he's loving the view. This is his kind of place, if only his stomach would quit growling. Staying here all day would be nice, but the wind is freezing. Better head back and strengthen the shelter. This setup won't get him through the winter. He wants to use a bigger stone to better utilize the fire's heat. He's been eyeing this stone pile for a while. Can he get one out? It's a tough job. Finally, he managed to get the stone out, but he's even more exhausted now. Just moving the stone wore him out. He knows it's a lot of work, but for a comfortable winter, the fireplace is crucial. He feels the warmth from the stone. He's tempted to lie down and rest on it. After all his hard work, the fireplace is finally looking decent. Roasting some meat in it would be ideal. He's nearly out of nearby stones, and the fireplace is only halfway finished. Next, he needs to smear mud to fill all the gaps, but the temperature is really cold. The mud feels like it might freeze his hands. He tries lighting a fire to test it, and it works better than expected. Day 26 is approaching, and Joe is starving and questioning his life choices, with his cabin still unfinished. If he had chosen a simpler design, he'd be enjoying it by now. Joe is really lost right now, especially with no food to eat. After some mental struggle, he forces himself to get up and work. First, he tries to catch some fish. He doubts the traps will work, there are lots of fish, but he's been too busy with the shelter. Now he's thinking about catching more fish. Joe's survival strategy isn't great, just the shelter alone has put him way behind the others, not to mention getting food. Let's see if he can finish it before he leaves. Joe has been at it for ages, and at last, a fish bites. The fish fights back, nearly dragging Joe into the water. Luckily, he managed to hold on. Joe is ecstatic. This fish is really big. It's probably the biggest one so far. Joe felt alive again and more confident about building the shelter. Had I known I could catch such a big fish, I'd have fished more. I wish I could snap a photo for my family. What a huge catch. You won't find this at the supermarket. We're set for food for days. Let's clean the fish quickly. The camera shifts to Jillian. Every morning, he feels like he's turning into smoked meat. If this continues, his body won't hold up. He decides to raise the chimney a bit to improve smoke ventilation. Fortunately, there's plenty of clay around. Raising the chimney height seems fine. We'll see how it performs with a fire. It works better than expected. No more concerns about getting smoked out. Jillian is really liking the chimney. Fingers crossed the food situation gets better too. As for Joel, he's been busy making souvenirs. He's made some dice to pass the time. For Joel, wilderness survival is really tough. When he has free time, he thinks of his family. So, he sets daily tasks for himself, making little things keeping himself busy, like when he made slippers. He just measured the size with tree bark, then wrapped them with rabbit fur to cover his toes. Although it was simple to make, the result was really good. If he could catch more rabbits, he could even make a cloak. Ewa thought for a while and decided to make a musical instrument from a small piece of the big tree. He thinks his son has a knack for music. Now that he has time, he wants to make an instrument for him. Can anyone guess what it is? Every day here. He misses the days with his family. He feels it's a great motivation to keep going. The first three flute pieces are ready. He then cuts a groove at the back, making it flat and tapered. If Yu Chen didn't need it for a fishing net, he could have made a guitar. The final product looks a bit rough. The sound is pretty good. They say it's a traditional Italian instrument. Any experts care to comment? Yua gave it a go with some playing and singing, confident his son will love it. He hopes to invite the other contestants for a joyful gathering. Imagining it feels very meaningful. If Yua gets eliminated early, he could definitely gather everyone together. Yua thinks this life is pretty good, though it would be better with her family. It's now the 27th day of the challenge. The focus moves to Cowley, whose fireplace exceeds expectations. Despite the night's cold, his shelter remains cozy and warm. He prefers staying inside. To improve the shelter, he needs more wood. This way, no matter how windy it gets, he won't have to worry about getting cold. He must use moss to fill the gaps so that rain won't seep in. Cowley quickly finishes building the walls. The only problem is that he can't tell the time inside. He might oversleep tomorrow. 
Cowley is pleased with his shelter, but worries about his food supply. He hopes the traps yield some surprises. Snaring a rabbit daily would be perfect, otherwise, finding food in winter will be tougher. In contrast, Amos remains calm. After all, he has plenty of supplies, with some fish already rotting from overfishing. Still, he continues to fish every day. Even though he has meat to eat daily, the energy expenditure is high. His body is getting weaker by the day. To Amos's surprise, his fishing net broke. Fortunately, it stayed nearby, and he retrieved it. Losing the net would have forced him out of the challenge early. He needs to find a way to secure it again. After some effort, Amos sets up the net once more. The weather is getting colder. He needs more branches to keep the fire going, so he focuses on gathering firewood. He doesn't want to wake up freezing at night. He starts with the nearby trees. Amos believes that maintaining this pace will help him complete the challenge. However, things take a turn at night. He can't find his axe in the shelter. This is really bad. Using a knife to chop trees is out of the question, so he must search for the axe. He revisits the spots where he chopped trees earlier. There are only a few places it could be. Could he have lost the axe? After a long search with no luck, Amos decides to wait until daylight. He feels quite down. He hopes it's just covered by snow. Finally, daylight comes, and the first thing he does is look for the axe. Will Amos be the next to go for losing something? Fortunately, the axe stands out. Amos spots it right away as he approaches. He quickly walks over to it, relieved that no animals took it. Amos's happiness returns. So, when unexpected situations arise, you must stay calm. Only by staying calm can you solve the problem. The challenge has reached day 29. Roland came up empty-handed with his fishing, so he had to resort to gathering berries to eat. No matter how many berries Roland ate, they were only a short-term solution. He needed meat, just as he resigned himself to eating berries. He suddenly noticed a muskox far away. Will Roland manage to hunt it? Stay tuned to find out. This is the largest animal ever hunted in the challenge. Check out this bull's heart, it's bigger than my face. It's so fresh, you could eat it raw. The texture alone shows its top quality. No seasoning needed, just dip the meat in boiling water for a few seconds, and I promise everyone will love it. How did he pull it off? Let's see. On day 29, Roland is busy hunting and shoots a bull. Even though they were 50 meters apart, the arrow hit the bull hard. Roland was beyond excited. Now I just need to wait for the bull to drop. It won't go far, so I can follow it slowly. The bull is resting there. I expected it to faint from blood loss, but it managed to get up and walk. Roland fears the blood will draw bears. Cleaning and processing the bull will be time-consuming, and he doesn't want to delay any further. Can only take the knife and risk rushing forward, although it is said that the cow has lost blood and is dizzy, but if it is pushed up, Roland can't bear it. You can only sneak around the back and sneak attack and run to a safe place with a stab Roland repeated the operation several times. The bull finally fell to the ground. Roland is ecstatic, no other contestant has ever hunted a bull. Armed with only a sword and a knife, he brought down the bull. If all goes well, he'll wake up to the aroma of fresh meat daily. The thought of it brings him comfort. Roland smiled, hoping everyone could witness his success. She imagined spending the prize money, but knew it was too soon to celebrate. Handling such a big bull is tough. You'll have to move back to the shelter before it gets dark. Roland calmed down when he thought about it, and he had to take out the internal organs of the cow first. There's so much meat in this body, I don't know if I'll be able to get it before dark anyway. Roland is going to eat his heart tonight. She could still feel her muscles throbbing it's no problem to eat it raw. Roland felt that it tasted good, but it was better to take it home and bake it better. If she wasn't worried about bears, she would have roasted it on the spot. Instead, she had to pack some and head back to camp. This should last for a bit. The bull can be processed tomorrow. Hopefully, bears won't drag it away overnight. Meanwhile, Amos discovered bear droppings around his area, making him feel quite uneasy. He was terrified the bear might break into his shelter and didn't feel capable of scaring it off. Having too much fish seemed to be a problem. He had to repair his door. While it might not completely stop a bear, at least it would buy him some reaction time. It still felt a bit flimsy. He hoped the bear wouldn't come back at night. Now, he went to check on the fishing net. No one would mind having extra meat, but catching more fish was crucial. Unfortunately, when he got to the shore, the net was missing. He felt quite disheartened. With time still left in the challenge, catching enough fish without the net would be tough. Moreover, food would become scarcer as winter approached. Amos felt he might have to declare defeat early. Now, let's check on Roland. At dawn, he resumed processing the bull, wondering if the bear had visited. If it was still around, he wouldn't mind hunting the bear for food. He was very anxious on the way. If the meat was eaten, he'd be mad enough to quit if the meat was gone. He hurried back along yesterday's path, seeing no signs of the bear. When he reached the bull, he finally felt relieved. Although there were some bite marks on the stomach, 
the bull was still mostly intact. He had to hurry and move the meat back to the shelter. Suddenly, he felt something approaching. Roland, on high alert, grabbed his bow and arrow, fearing a bear might charge. He didn't have much time to process the bull. The bull's hide could serve as a blanket. There was more meat than he expected. The four legs alone could last him a month. Roland found the work exhausting and still had to carry it back later. He craved the tenderloin raw. It would be incredible. He wished his family could join him. No one could resist such a treat. Just cutting out the meat took a lot of time. He had to stay alert to his surroundings. Any noise made him extremely nervous. He had to leave the meat aside for now. Birds kept swooping in to steal it. Roland couldn't stop them, so he just sped up. After a full day's work, he finally finished with the bull. He covered it with the hide, hoping it would protect the meat. Do you think Roland will run into trouble? Now, let's see how Mark is doing. He hung up the leftover fish and still had plenty of smoked meat in his shelter. Mark felt pretty confident. At least he doesn't have to worry about shelter or food, just the bears. He really misses his son. He wonders how his son is doing. Mark sings and dances in his shelter, hoping it will lift his spirits. And it does work. He feels better. He decides to check the gill net outside. He used to catch fish every day, but as time goes on, the catches have become fewer. Today, he caught nothing. Even though he has a good amount of fish left, the challenge is far from over. Relying solely on these won't be enough. Continuing like this isn't a solution. He needs to hunt other animals. Mark plans to lower the gill net a bit more. He hopes this will help him catch fish. So far, he hasn't faced major difficulties. It's easier than his military days. He's sure he can finish the challenge, but even though he's set the gill net, he's unsure if it'll work. He's quite anxious, hoping for a good catch tomorrow. It's the 31st day of the challenge. Jillian's mood is sour, fishing is tougher than expected. He plans to use the barrel he found yesterday. He plans to make a raft to reach deeper waters, thinking it will help him catch fish. He heads to the shore to build the raft. First, he builds the frame, unsure if it's right, but following his best guess. He's worried that after all this time and effort, he might not catch a single fish. He fears he might break down and cry. He isn't greedy. One fish a week would suffice. He's already gathered plenty of wood. If the sides are balanced, it should work. Next, he secures the barrel in the center. However, the waves are so large that he's worried about falling into the water. Jillian prefers to risk fishing in deeper waters than quit due to hunger. He's quite confident in the raft. After much effort, after much effort, he completes the raft, but is unsure how it will fare in the water. He hopes for the best. It's the 32nd day of the challenge. Mark hasn't had a proper wash in ages. He plans to boil water and use his socks as a towel. Bathing not only refreshes the body, but also boosts morale. Since arriving, he's shed a lot of weight. He thinks if he stays here for 100 days, he'll be nothing but skin and bones. He jokes that this is the best weight loss plan, better than any diet. After tidying up, Mark gets to work. He first checks on the secondary king and feels confident he's managed it well. Later, he can gather some food from the fields. There's plenty of edible stuff around, but he just enjoyed a bit of large game. Suddenly, he spots fresh bear droppings, likely from last night. So, in this wilderness, there's no shortage of food. It all comes down to your hunting skills. Mark hasn't attempted bow hunting bears yet, but he hopes to try. If stored properly, a bear's meat could last through the challenge. He decides to check on the fishing net. For now, he's counting on fish to keep him fed, but the net's lack of success is really getting him down. He really needs to find other food sources. Catching fish will be even harder in winter. He had planned to save dried fish for later. Now, he has to return and scavenge for food. No one anticipated the fish vanishing. Mark is in a full-blown panic. Now, he just needs to cover it. He's worried the branches might break and he could get seriously injured. Honestly, the view from up there is fantastic. He can watch the surroundings and if the bear shows up, he'll jab it in the rear. Next, he surveys the nearby bridge. The temperature is tolerable. The strong wind is causing him a headache and the bridge is nearly driving him mad. If this keeps up, it will seriously affect my survival here. I really hope the wind dies down a bit. The most important thing now is to get the shelter built. Winter is approaching fast and there's not much time left. Chopping and hauling wood daily is draining. I wouldn't advise anyone to follow his method. If Joe had built a smaller shelter, he could have started stockpiling supplies already. I'm curious to see how much he can finish before the challenge ends. Based on his progress, it seems it'll take about 10 more days to finish. Joe feels like he messed up given his current energy levels, 
Finishing the shelter before winter won't leave much time to gather supply. Completing daytime tasks feels impossible now. He just wants to finish the shelter before leaving, but he's already exhausted from moving and cutting wood. The worst part is that it started raining again, making the construction even harder. He can only go back to the shelter to rest. After each day's work, he needs a long rest, but there's still a mountain of tasks. The pressure of surviving in the wilderness keeps growing. Suddenly, he thought he heard a noise. The top was leaking, and Joe saw the hole was growing. At this rate, even if the shelter is built, the top won't keep it dry inside. Now he doesn't know what to do. If he gets wet and it freezes, staying warm with just a fire will be tough. Water droplets dotted his sleeping bag, and he was anxious to dry it quickly. If it gets soaked, he's done for. He did his best to cover and dry it, hoping to survive the rain. If not, he might have to quit the challenge. The rain persisted until nightfall. Leaving the shelter damp and worsening Joe's temper. He was so frustrated he almost tore the top apart. Reaching the 33rd day had been tough, and Joe was utterly exhausted. Life is just too tough right now. The resting place is a mess, wet everywhere, and he has no mood to build the shelter. He can only hang up the sleeping bag to dry, hoping for a dry environment tonight. Looking at the unfinished shelter, his emotions are mixed. If he can't complete the shelter and move in today, he might just quit and go home. So, he decides to put up the top right away. This way, he won't have to worry about water getting in. He'll gather enough wood later to finish the walls. Today, he's set on moving in. He secures the waterproof cloth tightly, hoping the wind won't wake him at night. The shelter looks decent, but it's unclear when it will be fully ready. For now, he'll keep building as much as he can. Joe's been working non-stop, with no time for food. I'm really worried he might faint from exhaustion. Every contestant is eerily quiet, who knows what they are thinking. It's already starting to snow outside. It's day 34 of the challenge. The snow-covered landscape significantly boosts his spirits. It's almost like entering a fairy tale. Once winter hits, finding food will be tougher. He used to gather ginger berries, but now it's nearly impossible. With snow blanketing everything, finding anything is tough. The biggest hassle is drying firewood daily, which takes a lot of time and effort. The upside is that animal tracks are now easy to spot making traps set up more efficient. As he walks, he notices many rabbit tracks and feels more confident about his traps. Catching one rabbit daily. He could extend his stay. Confident in his chances, he decides to invest more time in setting up traps. He's a bit worried his body might give out since it's been ages since his last decent meal. Now, let's see how Roland is doing. Since he hunted the bull, he's been eating meat daily or heading to get more. This is the right way to survive in the wild. Roland wishes he could share the meat with the other contestants. He finds it delicious, even without seasoning. Roland plans to pack up the meat today. He doesn't want other animals to steal it. He was in a pretty good mood initially, but then he saw bear tracks in the snow heading towards his meat. Roland grabs his bow and arrow, ready to defend. His worst fear has come true, the bear has devoured most of the bull's head. Fortunately, the nearby meat remains untouched. Roland now just wants to quickly move the meat back. He doesn't want the bear to eat it all. It's a massive task. Even moving one leg is tiring. He'll have to make seven or eight trips. And now, light snow is starting to fall. The best storage place beside sides outside is his stomach. He'll just eat meat for the next few days. The camera shifts to a moss. He thinks the weather is quite nice, but getting food has become much harder. He plans to use paracord to weave another net. Tomorrow is his daughter's birthday, and he longs to be with her. Winning the prize would mean a better life for her. He plans to make up for her birthday with a big gift when he returns. Once the net is ready, he heads to the shore, hoping to catch enough fish before the lake freezes. He wishes he could hunt large animals. It's now the 35th day of the challenge. Gillian intends to fish at sea. He's much thinner than when he arrived. The waves are small now. He worries the raft might capsize in the freezing water. He pushes it out and attempts to sit on it. The result is better than he expected, but paddling is extremely hard. The main issue is he can't reach the deep water. The raft nearly capsized, forcing him back to shore to rest. After all the effort he put into it, Gillian decides to gather berries instead, feeling more certain with each thought. It's also a Moss's child's birthday today. He hopes it brings him good luck. It's time to check on the net. Surviving in such a cold environment is really tough. Every action saps your warmth, and daily meat is essential for survival. He spots fish in the net from afar. A Moss is in a great mood, the fish are bigger than he expected. As long as he keeps this up, He's confident about finishing the challenge. The focus moves to Roland, knowing a bear is close by. He's been gorging on meat daily to keep it from the bear. Suddenly, he spotted fresh bear tracks outside. Now Roland just wants to find it and teach it a lesson. Following the tracks, he indeed sees the black snow. Do you think Roland can hunt it?
Let's wait and see. The challenge is now a day 35. Mark gave a tour of his shelter on camera, revealing a stash of smoked meat, jerky, and other resources. He's living quite comfortably. His favorite part is the fireplace. He made sure to take fire safety measures. No matter how many sparks fly, it won't ignite the shelter. Where do you think Mark's little cabin ranks among the contestants? Time to gather food. With snow on the ground, tracking and hunting are ideal. But it also covers the frozen berries. His main food source is still fish, but the gill net isn't working well. He's thinking of setting rabbit traps. If that fails, it's back to dried fish. How long can his body endure this? But he must stay optimistic and enjoy the wilderness survival. I think Mark is hungry every day. How can he feel any joy? The traps are somewhat useful, at least he can see the fur. But a fox came by to eat and left it sent Mark. Wow, it really thinks the rabbits are for it. Maybe he should go after the fox instead. It's day 36 now, and Roland is clearly in the lead. She eats beef every day. You can even smell the roast beef. Roland didn't waste anything back then. Now she's eating the bull testicles, known as a man's energy booster. If treated right, the skin can be turned into a bag. It could even be used as a hat. She didn't add any seasoning, just boiled it and ate it. She feels like she could hunt a bear now. There's still plenty of edible parts left, but she already ate the best one, the tongue. The tenderloin is especially tasty when roasted. It would taste even better with bread. Roland's not worried about hunger now, just bears stealing her food. Eat as much as you can and rest up. Life's pretty comfy this way. Now, let's look at Joel next door. He seems a bit out of it, not sure how much food he's got, but in terms of crafting, he's definitely ahead of the others. See, he's making another bowl. This tree is perfect for it. Joel thinks as long as he has enough food, it's fine. No need to spend too much time on it. Better to spend more time crafting. He can take these home as souvenirs and gifts. It's funny, others are here to survive, but Joel's here to do crafts. Now, she's struggling to carry the wood, mainly because she's eating too little. Her calves are starting to cramp. Surviving in the wild isn't for everyone. Now, she can only stop and rest for a while until she feels a bit better. Joel resumes crafting wooden bowls. She's much weaker now than when she first arrived. Back then, she could whip up these bowls in no time. Now, she gets winded after chopping for a bit and feels she needs a good rest afterward. Besides being physically tired, the hardest part is missing her family. Even when she stays focused and busy, she can't stop her mood from getting worse. The wooden bowl still needs to be slowly burned with charcoal. Joel poured his time and energy into it, working tirelessly through the night. Suddenly, he heard a noise outside. Worried an animal was taking his food, he rushed outside. Sure enough, there was a thief. This made Joel furious. The wolf wasn't afraid at all, eating slowly right in front of him. It took a while for the wolf to leave. Joel immediately checked the food, hoping not much was eaten. He took down all the remaining meat. Wow! The wolf ate about 10 pieces of fish. Now, this is all he has left, with bite marks still visible. The more Joel dwelled on it, the angrier he became. He felt an urge to hunt immediately. Food wasn't a concern before, but now, he has to find a way to get some meat and prevent the wolf from stealing again. Protecting stored food is really tough. It's smarter to eat more now. On day 37, Roland is also anxious about her food getting eaten. She plans to use cow brain to treat her gloves. In such harsh weather, she's afraid the gloves might crack. Every part needs an even coat. This makes them smoother and even usable as skin cream. It suits the skin nicely. Some might wonder why she doesn't cook it, but Roland has enough meat. She doesn't lack cow brain. She feels everything is going well, except for the wandering black bears. The conditioning is paying off. She can now build a food storage area for safety and stability. It's best to make a small cabin-like structure. It requires a lot of materials and needs to be built at the shelter's original spot. Only someone like Roland, fueled by daily meat, can handle such a big project. Others just can't. Still, this job is truly tiring. I have to admit, the structure looks solid. The base is packed with logs, ensuring no animals can get in. Just gather more wood, and any unused parts can be used as firewood. Roland is beginning to miss her family. It's her first long time away from home, and she can't even call them. She wonders how they're doing. Her spirits are dipping. She needs to quickly finish this. She's worried Roland might miss home too much and quit. The half-built structure looks decent. It just needs a roof to be done. The inside is spacious. All the meat can fit inside, but she's unsure if it can withstand bears. Roland plans to secure it tightly. She's unsure which animal might steal the meat, but she might use some as bait. If a wolf enters, it will lock. It sounds pretty intriguing. She needs to quickly finish this storage cabinet. So far, it's been smooth sailing. She stores all the meat, which should last a month. 
she'd love to invite others over if she can. Everyone could eat beef and chat together. Surviving alone in the wild is really boring. She can only keep busy with work. This place is almost done. Roland has spent a lot of time and effort on it. She hopes it works better than expected. On the 38th day of the challenge, Mark feels he's lost too much weight. Now he's a bit dazed. He advises against coming here to lose weight, as it's easy to harm your body. It's better to do it gradually. Before winter, resources were quite abundant. You could pick berries and catch fish. But now, there's nothing left. Even bears are rarely seen. I can only check the traps. On my way, I found some moss. These are decent food, but the most important thing is to eat meat. Unexpectedly, the trap caught a fox. I wonder if anyone has ever eaten fox meat. What does it taste like? Mark was really torn about it. He wasn't keen on eating the fox. After some thought, he chose to release it. The fox feared for its life. It struggled, but couldn't escape. Mark made sure it wasn't hurt, and let it go right away. He hoped the fox wouldn't get caught again. What would you do with it? Mark moved on to check the other traps. Unexpectedly, he caught a rabbit. It was quite big. It seemed the fox was trying to steal food and got caught. Thinking about it, maybe he shouldn't have let it go. Next, he checked C.I. Wang's side. He felt he did a good deed today. So, Sai Wang had some success too. Mark felt things were looking up. He was so happy he was speechless. It was time to head back and eat. Glancing at Joel's area, he noticed something missing in the corner. He decided to build a small box for storing fish to keep them safe from wolves. Using a stick, he started digging. It had to be about a foot deep, then he'd cover it with snow and spruce branches. Voila, a simple refrigerator. It was almost done. Next, he used wooden stakes for support. After all this work, he was almost exhausted. Now, just standing made him dizzy, and he feared he might faint. He gathered spruce branches and wove them around the stakes. He packed it tightly with snow to keep the fish safe from thieves. The final result looked pretty solid. He even weighed it down with stones, confident the meat was secure. Now, he needed to gather more food to stockpile. And there's the firewood. It took a lot of time to chop it every day. It also needed to be dried before use. Before arriving, he knew it would be tough, but he didn't realize just how hard. If not for the million dollar prize, he would have gone back to sleep a long time ago. As long as he could get through this period, things would get better. He said that, but his body couldn't hold up. <laughs> Fortunately, I avoided the rocks. Standing up now feels draining. My body is weaker than I expected. I might actually need someone to carry me home. On day 39, Jillian survived another day. I really want to eat something to celebrate. I keep imagining the smell of bread. When I woke up, my hand was still gripping the bow tightly. I'm always anxious about something going wrong. If this keeps up, I'll lose it. I need to check if there's any food outside. Jillian noticed more moose tracks. If she could hunt one, her life would be much more comfortable. Although the chances aren't great, she still has to try her best. Let's check the traps. She walked the whole way without spotting any rabbit tracks, and the traps remained untouched. Jillian's mood kept worsening. She desperately needs food. Without it, there's no way to win the prize. Now, she can only rely on her bow to try hunting. Let's see if she can find anything. After wandering around, she returned to the shelter empty-handed. Jillian couldn't hold it in anymore. She broke down in front of the camera, crying loudly. She felt she had tried her best. Since winter began, she hasn't managed to find any food. She can't figure out why, if only her husband were here. He definitely fixed the food issue. Missing him made her even sadder. Meanwhile, her neighbor was much more laid back. He still had the mood to play with small animals. They were so cute that he wanted to take them home as pets. He tried to reach out and touch one. Just as he was about to, the little guy got scared and ran away. What a pity. Having no other option, he searched for rabbits. He noticed many animal tracks near the traps and felt hopeful about catching one. He wasn't concerned about the remaining contestants. You need to survive a hundred days to win, if no one does. The show would profit. The traps were somewhat useful. He caught a rabbit. If he could catch one every day, he felt he still had a chance. Unexpectedly, another trap caught one too. He thought it must be the little guy bringing him luck. He wouldn't have to worry about food for a few days. Just when he thought he had enough, the traps caught another rabbit. Just as he was about to celebrate, he saw another one. Wow, he caught for rabbits in one go. The most important thing for a family is to be together. Cowley is now fixated on eating rabbit meat. Food has been scarce since entering the cave, but this time, the rabbit catch is plentiful. He feels he must show gratitude for nature's gift and focus more on survival, avoiding distractions. On the 40th day, Yua is getting weaker, despite having meat daily. But it's not helping much. Her homesickness is intensifying, and she's thinking about quitting. At night, hunger keeps her awake, and her calves cramp painfully. Her body and mind are nearing collapse. 
Yua doubts she can last a hundred days, but quitting now feels wasteful. She decides to leave after eating the remaining dried fish. If the wolves don't take it, she might still manage to hang on. Suddenly, a sharp pain hits her stomach. Joel had assured his wife he'd return if he got sick. Now, he feels it's time to contact the show's team. Since the wolves attacked his camp, Joel has noticeably weakened and had a feeling he might have to quit, but he didn't think it would be this soon. The show then focuses on Joel, known for crafting souvenirs in his spare time. He can craft various items, but his health is failing. He needs a thorough checkup at the hospital. He dreads returning and causing his family concern. Joel believes he had a solid shot at winning, especially with his cozy shelter. Despite the wolves taking his food, he had enough for several days. Given another chance. He would surely last longer if given another chance. With you gone, six participants are left. Roland seems to have a clear edge. No one else is going to hunt a cow, right? The camera then shifts to Mark, who gazes at a photo of his son, feeling a deep longing. Contestants often quit when they miss their families too much. Mark is eager to return and see his son. He wonders if his son can say dad yet. Despite the heavy snow, he plans to carve a toy horse for his son today. This piece of wood is perfect. He sketches the outline first, then removes the excess parts. Mark is determined to win the million dollar prize for his son's better future. The crafting is manageable, but the wood is thick and tough to cut. He has to chip away at it slowly. Mark works until nightfall. Finally, he carved out the little horse. It just needed a bit more polishing. Mark felt quite pleased with himself. Suddenly, he saw sparks ignite his shelter. The flames spread quicker than he expected. Who knew there'd be so many wild rabbits? Set up some traps, and by morning, you've caught a bunch. Every rabbit is accounted for, and I could even use their fur to make a coat. I could turn their fur into a jacket. As for cooking, I'm torn between stew or roast to keep the flavor. The key is to preserve the natural taste. Would you bring spices if you were in the wild? It's day 40 of the challenge. Mark never imagined he would set his shelter on fire. The fire kept growing, and he had to tear down the burning parts. Fortunately, the shelter can still be used. He'll collect branches and moss in the morning to fix it. He must be more careful next time. Otherwise, it might catch fire again next time. After a busy cleanup, Mark finally gets to sit down and rest. He feels fortunate. Thankfully, it didn't ignite while he was asleep. He found it just in time and saved the shelter. Otherwise, he would have had to leave. Surviving out here means being extra careful with fire. One small error can cause a disaster like his. Mark isn't in the mood to sleep now. He's thankful he can still sit by the fire for warmth. He really misses his son at home. He wonders how his son is doing. After the fire, Mark wants to go home even more. He barely survived the night. Now he must quickly fix the shelter as the wind intensifies. It's not even fully winter yet, and it's already this challenging. It's tough to picture the days ahead. Luckily, the shelter's frame is intact. He only needs to replace the outer layer. To prevent another fire, he decides to relocate the waterproof cloth by the fireplace. While it's a small task, it can be exhausting. He needs to take some time to rest properly. It's the 41st day of the challenge. Joe feels on the verge of collapse. With no room to stretch, he can only twist his neck slightly. To relieve his body, he has put so much effort into this shelter. He's really worn himself out. He originally thought he could finish it quickly and stockpile enough food for winter. But reality is harsh. He's been busy all this time. Barely scraping by. Any surprise could end his challenge. Joe's thoughts are simple now. He no longer cares about the million dollar prize, his focus is on finishing the shelter. He works a bit, then needs to rest for hours. The shelter won't be done anytime soon, and he still needs to gather food. Joe even considered burning it down and leaving, but he keeps sooner or later, Joe's going to crack. Meanwhile, Amos has gathered plenty of food and, out of boredom, started crafting little trinkets. He hopes to bring them home for his kids. As the weather cools, finding food gets tougher. The fishing rod won't hold up for the whole challenge. He needs to find more food. Since he first arrived, he's lost about 30 pounds. He often feels dizzy and unwell. If he could, he would love to hunt a big game. That way, he could rest and survive until the end. But with only rabbit tracks around, he has to rely on his traps and hope they work. Amos trusts his traps, having made them since childhood. If a rabbit comes by, Amos is looking forward to some tasty rabbit meat, but he's worried about foxes stealing his catch. The tracks are pretty close to his shelter. If they sneak into the shelter, that would be a disaster. So, Amos decides to craft a spear for protection. It could fend off small animals, but a bear swipe would easily break it. 
Amos is focused on making weapons when he suddenly hears a noise. It could be a fox trying to steal his catch. He hurries outside to investigate. Fortunately, he acts swiftly. The trap has caught a rabbit, and he scares the fox away. Otherwise, the rabbit would have been stolen. He'll clean it up tomorrow. Amos feels confident again. He believes he can finish the 100-day challenge. On day 42, he considers chewing some Yunshan toothpaste. They say it keeps your breath fresh all day and lifts your spirits. Next, he continues to look for something edible nearby. Even though he's caught several rabbits before, he's still losing weight. He needs more food to regain his energy. Suddenly, he notices porcupine tracks. Their fat is essential, but he also sees wolf tracks nearby. That's not good news. The porcupine might already be targeted by the wolves. Despite this, Killian decides to check it out. He can't just let food slip away. The tracks are getting more numerous, and he doesn't know which way to go. The dropping temperatures are making hunting tougher. He's also wondering how the others are faring. Cowley scans the area and notices rabbit tracks. There are quite a few animals around, but none are coming our way. After searching, I still haven't found a porcupine. I have to set more traps here. The camera shifts to Amos. He's in a really good mood. After all, he caught a rabbit last night. Now he can clean and eat it, staying near his shelter to avoid attracting bears. Don't be fooled by the size of the rabbit, there's actually not much meat inside, and even less fat, so just eating this will make you thinner over time. In no time, Amos has cleaned it up. He thinks fish tastes better. This meat is just a snack, he didn't anticipate the fox being drawn to the innards. Amos muses aloud, I wonder how fox meat tastes. Even when Amos tries to scare it off with noise, the fox remains unfazed, still searching for food near the shelter. He quickly grabs his bow and arrow to scare it off. If the fox enters the shelter, he'll have to eat it, even though it pains him. The fox is still swaggering around, making Amos so angry that he shoots an arrow at it. If it had come nearer, he'd be roasting fox meat tonight. He used to fear black bear attacks daily. Now he has to be wary of foxes too. This 100-day challenge isn't for everyone. Amos wishes he could store more food. Let's check on Killian. She hasn't eaten well in ages and deeply misses her husband. It's truly grueling here. She works hungry every day and feels like she could devour a whole cow right now. This is the longest she's been apart from her husband since they married. She worries about him and wishes he could be here with her. Forget a hundred days, even a year wouldn't be a problem. It's time to see how things are now. Without enough food, Killian considers heading home early, wondering where the turkeys have gone. Catching one would be such a relief. There are many tracks near the traps, but Killian fears other animals are stealing the food. Spotting a gnawed rabbit. Her hopes are dashed. She was already in a bad mood, and now it's even worse. The meat is inedible. The trap next door did catch a rabbit, but it was gnawed on. Killian is furious and wants to burn the place down. We were looking forward to a good meal today, but now I'm too upset to eat. If the other traps are like this, I can't handle it. I think it's time to head home and rest. We've only managed to catch one rabbit so far. I couldn't stop myself from crying again. Killian longs for her husband's comfort, feeling abandoned by this challenge. The loneliness is unbearable. Living like this will make anyone lose their mind. Killian's endurance so far shows her strength, but it's uncertain how much longer she can keep going. The camera moves to Joe, whose body is weakening daily. Each morning, he struggles to get up, yet, he still aims to enhance his shelter by laying stones on the ground later. However, I believe he should check the traps first, without food. Building is pointless. Today, Joe's luck was good, he caught a rabbit. Though it was a bit small, he held it close to warm it up a bit, making it easier to handle later. What Joe didn't expect was that another trap also caught a rabbit, and it was still alive, struggling. Joe couldn't stand seeing the rabbit suffer, so he swiftly ended its pain. He was baffled by today's events. Another rabbit was caught in the neighboring trap. Great, another hassle. Joe isn't thrilled, if not for the tears at the corner of his mouth. I nearly believed him. Joe enjoys a hearty meal and gains confidence in building his shelter. He figured three rabbits would suffice, but nature gifted him a fourth. It's been ages since he had this much food. He was in a great mood, hurrying back to clean the rabbits. It's been ages since he saw this much meat. He put them straight into the pot to cook. He thought the meat tasted fantastic and hoped he could eat like this more often. Suddenly, Joe heard a wolf howl. This was not good news. He had just eaten rabbit meat and now wolves were coming. No sleep tonight. He needed to stay vigilant. Joe was preoccupied with figuring out a plan. If it wasn't a whole pack of wolves, he still had a shot at managing it. Tension was mounting. It was now day 43 of the challenge, and Joe woke up feeling off. He didn't feel like building anymore. The 100-day challenge was really tough, and he doubted anyone could finish it. He just wanted to go home and rest. Now he had to push himself to work. 
He needs to build a perfect shelter. If he doesn't finish before the lake freezes, he'll seriously think about quitting. Rabbit meat has no fat at all. No matter how much you eat, it won't restore your energy. Everything is going downhill. Suddenly, I felt sick. This isn't what I expected. My legs are trembling, and I can hardly stand. Joe feels everything is too difficult. He thinks eating rabbit meat is making him use more energy to digest it. Even so, he insists on finishing the shelter. He can lose the challenge, but the shelter must be completed. Conversely, Mark is more laid back. He lies on the ground, reluctant to move, thinking this life isn't so bad. His shelter isn't fully repaired yet. It actually needs a lot of materials. Every day, he forces himself to work hard. He worries his body will soon give out if this keeps up, especially since his fish supply is nearly depleted. He'll just keep getting hungrier. He's lost a lot of weight since he arrived and his stomach is probably having problems. Despite eating a lot today, he still feels hungry and never seems to get full. Now, he has to ration his food. He hopes rationing will help him continue. Mark misses his kids more each day and is very concerned about his health. Despite his efforts to stay motivated, Mark's mental state is deteriorating. He's curious about the other participants' progress. Can anyone really complete this challenge? Anyway, he's almost at his limit. He'll take it one day at a time. On the 44th day, the crew arrived early to pick someone up. Who do you think quit? It can't be Roland, as he's been absent. Any of the others might have quit. I believe Joe and Mark are the most likely. Shortly after, the crew arrived. Yes, the one who quit is the man who kept mentioning finishing his shelter. He feels his body can't handle it anymore. He shouldn't have built such a large one from the start. It was completely beyond his capability. Plus, he hasn't had much to eat. His body has been overworked every day. He wants to reunite with his family while he can still move. This challenge is just too hard. He doesn't think anyone can complete it. If possible, he hopes to keep the shelter and come back to finish it after he recovers. Joe is obsessed with it, curious if he'll see the final result. What do you all think of his shelter? Is Joe's shelter up to the challenge? Only five of us remain, and Roland's the only one with a steady food supply. The other participants aren't doing so well. The camera shifts to Gillian, who looks in good spirits today. She feels she must keep going, despite wanting to reunite with her husband. The million dollar prize could change their lives. She and her husband could improve their life. So she keeps pushing herself to stay strong. Things aren't great right now. I need to get more food to keep my energy up. Suddenly, I see a rabbit in the trap. This is a good start. At least I have some meat for today. I didn't expect to find another rabbit in the nearby trap. Gillian's luck seems to be improving. Nearby, there's another rabbit in the trap. Grateful for nature's gift, he feels motivated to continue. Gillian had handled so many rabbits that she could skin one quickly. They didn't have much fat on them. He's still worried about his body's endurance and fears overeating could be harmful. Mark, on the other hand, is also struggling. Bored enough to talk to himself on camera, Mark relies on the crew's periodic visits for footage and health checks. Being alone for such a long time can really drive you crazy. Mark thinks the scariest part is, sometimes it feels like someone is beside you, and you catch yourself talking to them before realizing it's just you. I truly admire those who live in isolation. How do they manage to live alone? Mark tried to lift his spirits, but it didn't help much. He just wants to go home to his kids. After much thought, he decided to quit the challenge. The million dollar prize is alluring, but his health takes precedence. As Mark was leaving, he was surprised to see the fox he had released. It felt like the fox came to say goodbye, which moved Mark deeply, showing animals can form connections. He left the remaining meat in the shelter for the fox. He decided to leave it all for the fox. Soon, the crew arrived at Mark's place. It was surprising that two people were leaving in one day. The crew is beginning to question if anyone will complete the challenge. Mark believes he has done his best, but his body is struggling. Letting go can be tougher than persevering. Mark now just wants to get home to his son. If he could catch a big animal, he might have completed the challenge if his luck had been better. Sadly, another contestant has quit, and it feels like the million dollar prize might not be given out this time. The camera shifts to Cowley, whose trap has caught another rabbit. He's in high spirits and still hopes to catch that porcupine. Coincidentally, today is a festival, so he decides to cook a celebratory meal, hoping it will bring him luck. He starts by stewing the rabbit. While the natural flavor is decent, he craves something richer but lacks seasonings. After an indefinite wait, he finally cooks the rabbit meat, which smells good. Cowley wonders how many contestants remain. He hopes everyone can finish the challenge. Do you think anyone will make it to the end? Friends who frequently see wolf packs in the wild know to stay calm and grab their camera to capture the rare moment.
This is incredibly rare footage. Even if you're an experienced hunter, don't try to hunt them. Wolves are more adept than you. Alone, you might stand a chance. But against a pack, it's wise to back off. If you're fortunate, they'll eventually leave. If they don't, you'll need a spear for defense and hope it deters them. Even though surviving in the wild is risky, there's plenty of food around. In winter, just break a hole in the ice. Fishing here for a bit is quite relaxing, and catching fish is effortless. You might think he's just toying with the fish, but check out this one that's bigger than an arm. Who wouldn't be impressed? Who's up for a fishing trip? I promise you'll catch something. Not into fishing? Join us for cattle hunting. Spot a lone one. You can take your bow and try your luck. Who knows, you might end up like him, bringing back a load of tasty beef. No seasoning needed, just toss it in the pot and cook. It's the best tasting meat. We're now on day 45 of the challenge. The camera shifts to Roland. She's still sipping on her beef soup. Maybe she's had too much meat lately. My stomach feels off. Roland scraping out some fat now, hoping it'll help. In fact, there are a lot of things that can be eaten when you eat the cow's head, and the outer layer of skin is torn off, and the meat on the top is edible. It may not taste very good, but as long as it's cut small enough, it can be swallowed, and no resource can be wasted in the wild. Like the nose and lips, you can use it to make a pot of soup and drink it, and if you have the chance, you can make it into a hat and wear it. Roland's life keeps improving. Be very careful when scraping with a knife to keep the fur intact. Scrape gently along the edges. I must admit, there's plenty of good stuff here. Whether for eating, or is it used to maintain items it is a good choice it is also good to bake the human bones and meet on it 100 days challenge for Roland. No longer worries about food. He just needs to keep the shelter warm and avoid injuries. He's sure to win the prize. The others don't stand a chance. Roland just wonders how many contestants are left. I'd love to have them over for some beef. Back in the hunting days, I'd be the tribe's top hunter for sure. Roland seems to be getting a bit arrogant, but I understand, if I hunted a bull, I'd be even more proud. After all this effort, I finally cut out a piece. It should last three or four days. Once stewed, it'll release a good amount of fat. I could really use that fat right now. I wonder how much meat he has left. The camera cuts to Amos. He woke up in a good mood, planning to gather more firewood, but his spirits sank when he saw the lake had frozen over. His mood plummeted. The fishing rods were frozen solid. How could he catch any fish now? The fish likely wouldn't return to this spot. Amos checked the gill net and found it full of holes. Repairing it would be a hassle, and the odds of catching fish later were slim. It wasn't worth the effort. Amos put the gill net away. Struggling to adapt to the cold for the first time. If he didn't have to chop and gather firewood, he'd prefer to relax by the fire in the shelter all day. He noticed many fox tracks on his way. They loved to steal food. His own food supplies weren't abundant, so he had to be extra cautious at night. He also saw traces of other animals not far from the shelter. Amos was quite worried about this. If a wolf pack or black bear appeared, the shelter wouldn't hold. He was anxious about what lay ahead. Meanwhile, Cowley was crafting a gill net, still hopeful for a catch. The key point was that this was his first attempt at making one by hand. Catching some fish would be a bonus. Even though he wanted to set it down now, the area felt risky. He feared that if he went down, he might not make it back up. For now, he had to proceed cautiously. Rabbit fat was too rare, eating it only made him hungrier. He desperately needed the nutrients from fish. Catching one every few days would help sustain him. Before heading out, he had to build a fire. If he fell in, he could return to dry off and prevent hypothermia. No one could guarantee their safety. Cowley's idea was good, but the rocks were covered in ice. Walking on it was especially treacherous. Cowley hesitated for a long time, but ultimately took the risk. If she didn't catch any fish, she might not survive the next few days. She reached the platform and quickly dipped her wing into the water. Suddenly, Cowley slipped and fell to the ground. It was really awful, her teeth hit her lip directly. Fortunately, the wound was small enough for Callie to treat herself. She now avoids thinking about death and wishes she didn't have to return here. After getting back to the shelter and cleaning the wound, he figured stitches weren't needed, but eating would be tough for a bit. This time, it was just a fall and an injury. If she fell into the water, the crew couldn't rescue her in time. Callie was terrified at the thought of falling into the water. She feared it more than hunger and knew she needed a safer fishing spot. Callie was growing increasingly anxious. By the 46th day, Amos still had some dried fish to sustain himself. As the temperature kept dropping, it became harder to find more food and to adapt to the cold. 
He had put on all his clothes, but it wasn't very effective. He wished he could roast himself over the fire. The smoked fish supply in the shelter was running low. Amos needed to ration it, or it would be gone in a day. The smoked fish was incredibly tasty, even in small amounts. Sadly, once it was finished, there wouldn't be any more. He needed to find more food. Suddenly, wolves howled. Amos quickly went out to investigate. The sound seemed to be at a distance. He wasn't sure exactly where, but he was definitely in wolf territory. Amos was quite bold. It was his first time encountering such a situation. The best way to face a wolf pack is not to show fear and retreat. You can only scare them off by confronting them. To stay safe, Amos returned to the shelter to craft weapons. He needed to be prepared to confront the wolves calmly at any time though he hoped to avoid them if possible. Amos planned to make a spear. After continuous grinding and adjusting, it was gradually taking shape. The decoration wasn't just for looks. The added weight from the decoration made the spear easier to handle. Now, everything was set, it was just a waiting game for the wolves. Let's check in on Roland. She watched the crows in the sky, feeling annoyed because they always tried to steal food. She can only blame herself for having too much meat. Tired of beef every day, Roland plans to catch some fish today. Paired with beef, it would be delicious. Roland heads back to a familiar fishing spot she hasn't visited in a while. She wonders if there are still fish passing by. She quickly goes back to get the gill net and sets it up. Luckily, the rocks here aren't too slippery. For now, she's safe from slipping into the water. As Roland wonders if the gill net will work, she spots a herd of cattle nearby. Wow! If she could hunt another, she might need a shed for the meat. If she could find a lone one, she'd be happy to hunt a few more. She sneaks around to track the herd's direction, hoping they don't run to other contestants. If someone else hunts them, she would be upset not getting any beef. Meanwhile, let's check on Jillian. Today, she's lucky to catch a grouse. It proves that traps are somewhat useful. Although grouse meat is good, the taste is a bit lacking. Her husband's cooking is unbeatable and she never tires of it. She longs to go home and hug him right now. Life here is truly torturous. She feels she has no chance of lasting a hundred days. She's already starting to give up. Soon after eating the grouse, Jillian is hungry again. She goes to the lake, needing fat to sustain her. Right now, only fish can satisfy her. Everything else just makes her hungrier. Plus, the temperature is dropping. Even breathing feels a bit painful now. Jillian plans to try ice fishing, though it's quite risky. If she falls into the water, it won't be just a simple cold. The ice looks a bit thin at the moment. It might take a few more days for it to be strong enough. Jillian wanders around nearby and thinks ice fishing might still be possible. She'll check again tomorrow. She really needs the fish fat. On the 47th day of the challenge, Amos is in decent spirits. Today, he plans to gather more firewood and set up some traps. It's a good plan, but suddenly a wolf appears outside. Amos is on edge, fearing the wolf might attack any second. More wolves are roaming by the shore. Amos doesn't even dare to breathe loudly. The wolves are just circling around. He has no idea what they want. Finally, once the wolves leave, Amos ventures out to check. They are at his fish processing spot. It was extremely dangerous. If he had been sleeping there, the wolves might have barged in for a feast. Now Amos just wants to go home. Being stalked by a wolf pack is terrifying. They were less than 10 meters away. If it had been a lone wolf, he might have been able to hunt a single wolf with his bow and arrow. He prays the pack doesn't return. It's day 48 of the challenge. Jillian notices the weather is much colder and hopes the fox fur is warm enough. He's been missing his husband a lot lately. He desperately wants to leave and return home. Only fellow participants know that loneliness is tougher than hunger. The rabbit has no fat at all. He feels he can't keep eating like this. It's really hard to stay motivated. He could faint at any moment. The fox fur is better than he imagined. He'll try standing on it later. He's talked a lot, so it should be fine. Jillian tapped the ice with a rod, finding it less solid than expected. He hesitated to venture further and chose to wait for safety. Meanwhile, the camera shows Roland arranging fur. He uses smoke to cover the smell, so he can use it for warmth later. His shelter is also very sturdy. The shelter is sturdy and won't collapse under the snow, making it quite comfortable inside. Now, it's time to check the situation at the rock. He's worried about slipping on the rocks. Roland prioritizes safety and doesn't want an injury to force him to quit. Even though a shot cow lasts a while, daily consumption is high. Roland's weight keeps dropping. He could wear himself out. The 100-day challenge isn't for everyone. The environment is extremely harsh. One careless step and you could fall. Roland walks slowly, worried about accidents. Just as he mentioned it, he slipped. Fortunately, it was minor, just some knee pain. However, the net fell into the water. He can't go down to get it. If he waits for the ice to form and then retrieves the net, he might lose it. This affects Roland's mood. To prevent the net from being washed away, he has to risk going down. With a long rod and a loop, he just managed to get the net back. It was tough. Right now, he can't set the net. 
He'll need to wait for the ice to form before trying to fish again. His knee still aches a bit, so he heads back to the shelter to check on things. On the 49th day of the challenge, Jillian woke up early to find the lake's surface much more solid than the day before. Walking on it was easy, so he could now find a spot to break the ice. Jillian was quite pleased. Fishing was certainly doable. He could almost picture the fish waving at him. He worked on enlarging the hole. Then he could drop the fishing line and wait. Since the water was murky, he had to watch the line's movement. Despite his seemingly weak appearance, he was actually very experienced on the ice. He knew how to survive in cold environments. But he seemed to be struggling, just as Jillian was ready to give up. To his surprise, he caught a fish larger than he had imagined. Overjoyed, he began shouting. He worried the ice might crack, so Jillian lay down to release his emotions. He hadn't been this happy in ages and wanted to share the moment with his husband. This was likely the largest fish he'd ever caught. He felt relieved knowing he had enough food for the next few days and was sure he could catch more fish and rabbits later. Life was finally improving, allowing him more time to fish. Just as he thought that, he caught another yep. one. It seemed winter was Jillian's comfort zone. He was so happy he wanted to jump into the water to cool off. He had to admit, his joy was overwhelming. This was just what he hoped for. He covered the hole with spruce branches and headed back to clean and cook the fish. He couldn't stop smiling. He wondered how many contestants remained and hoped many of them were women. To show they were just as capable as the men, surviving equally well in the wild. He was curious about what would happen next. Let's wait and see together. This is a precious video of hunting a porcupine. To pinpoint its location, the woman squeezed into a rock crevice despite feeling uncomfortable. Once she confirmed the porcupine was inside, she quickly circled around and took a shot. Spotting the bloodstains, she knew it was secured. Soon after. She hauled the porcupine up, pondering the best way to cook it for maximum flavor. It's now day 51 of the challenge. The camera moves to Roland, who plans to explore today. She keeps hearing squirrels calling. Roland wonders where the squirrels find their food. She hopes to discover their stash, which should be well stocked for winter. She grabs an axe and chops down the tree, hoping to catch the squirrels too. Quickly! Roland chops down the tree, revealing a bounty of food. Sadly, the squirrels had already fled, leaving behind their hoarded stash. She tearfully gathers everything, marveling at nature's bounty, though it's tough on the squirrels. Roland can't wait to taste it. The leftover part of the ox hide from before can be used to stuff mushrooms. She cuts off the nose and lip parts, then wraps them with wire. And just like that, a storage pouch is done. In the wild, you need to think smart and use what you have. That's how you improve your situation. Roland wishes the squirrels would be smart enough to come over, undress, and hop into the pot. With mushrooms, it would be a tasty meal. This ox hide is really being put to good use by Roland. If she could get another one, she could even make some toys to bring back for the kids. It's been a long time since she stayed in the wild alone for so long. Her mood is better than she imagined. What do you think of this ox hide pouch? Guaranteed 100% genuine ox hide, handmade. I recommend everyone get one. Now she can gather and store mushrooms. Maybe there are more squirrels around. Hopefully, she can find their stash next time. The next harvest could be more bountiful. It's now day 52 of the challenge. The camera moves to Killian. He's gathered a good amount of firewood, but it still seems insufficient. It might only last until midnight. While Killian is busy tidying up the firewood, he suddenly sees something approaching. He's not sure what it is. He immediately goes to check. The next second, you see Killian walking over. <laughs> I must admit, her attitude is truly remarkable. She finds something to take a She really loves her coat. Feels like she's wrapped in a big quilt. Perfect for someone who hates the cold. After all, local herders crafted it from reindeer skin. When you walk by the fire, you can even smell meat. It's cozier than anything you find in a store. It's time to again. Time to scout for some food. You find a big form. So I'll be by day. Surviving here is becoming more and more challenging. Most people wouldn't last this long. Carry traps have nearly all been ruined by the snow. We can't rely on catching rabbits. We'll need to reset all the traps. No rabbit tracks around here. They've probably moved to another area. Now we can only try our luck. For now, I know of a porcupine den. I always check it when I walk by. I wasn't sure if the porcupine would return, just when I thought I'd come back empty-handed again. I was shocked to see the porcupine right under the carcass. The nearby tree bark was all chewed up by it. If we, here, if we set the trap here, this will definitely try to escape. I can probably catch the porcupine myself. This is much better than a rabbit. I won't starve for the next week. This should be the porcupine's regular route. Wedge this tree into the gap here. The porcupine will surely get trapped. We'll check back tomorrow to see if it worked. It's snowing hard again, so I'll head back to the shelter. Killian's lost a lot of weight since he got here. He's lost a lot of weight. Luckily, he's still got some muscle left. 
Surviving in the wild really does build you up. If the food here were more plentiful, my biceps would be even bigger. After flexing for the camera, it's back to ice fishing. Killian is eager to get started. He wondered how much he could catch today, thinking the other contestant spots probably hadn't frozen over yet. The crew had picked a great location. It's still the same spot. Once I clear the spruce branches, I can drop the fishing line into the hole. The only issue is the long walk, and I'm really worried about frostbite. Today hasn't been lucky. I've been sitting here for hours. Jillian's dream is to compete in the Olympics. She started in gymnastics. Later, a back injury forced her to switch to swimming, where she excelled until more injuries led to her retirement. Joining this survival challenge is awesome. It'd be even better with my husband, I'd feel more confident about finishing. This is like my own Olympics. I need to at least win a medal. Suddenly, I felt something tugging. Killian immediately pulled hard. It was even bigger than he imagined. He couldn't get the fish out. It's a real shame. That fish could have fed him for nearly a week. His spirits plummeted immediately. His enthusiasm seems to have vanished. Unsure when he'll catch another fish, he wishes he could just dive in and grab it. The fish was enormous. The more Killian dwells on it, the worse he feels. He's lost his drive to fish. Now he just wants to go back and lie down to rest. It's the 53rd day of the challenge, and Amos is bored. He crafted some percussion instruments. Though he's unsure what he's hitting, his expression shows he's having fun. Amos really likes music, especially when surviving alone in the wild. It helps lift his spirits. He hasn't fished in ages, and the smoked fish in the shelter will only last about another week. Amos is quite anxious, but given the current weather and environment, it's really hard to get enough food. If this continues, his body won't hold out until the end. What worries him most are the wolves. If he gets more food, the shelter might not keep them out. Should he hunt wolves for food? He's curious if wolf meat tastes like dog. Is it similar to dog meat? If possible, Amos wants to stay by the fire all the time. If only the lake would freeze over sooner. He might be able to ice fish for food. There's no use worrying now. He polished the metal pieces he found into hooks. With those, he won't have to worry about losing the fish. He just needs some bait, which he'll find once the lake freezes. He hopes to catch a big fish. It's the 54th day of the challenge. He woke up feeling pretty good today. The shelter is so cozy, he doesn't want to leave, but the thought of catching a porcupine lifts his spirits. His spirits lift. Eagerly, he rushes out to check. Each night, he dreams of delicious food, making his stomach rumble. Desperate for porcupine meat, he grabs his weapon and heads to the trap. He expected it to be cold, but not this freezing. His exposed skin shivers as he wonders how the others are coping. If I don't catch anything today, I might just quit and go home. Why didn't they choose to do this in the summer? Soon, Roland arrived at the porcupine's den. His feelings were quite mixed. The traps had no effect at all. The porcupine had wrecked the traps, and Roland had no idea where it went. He could only climb up and hope for the best. He hoped the porcupine was still inside. Fortunately, Roland could squeeze in to check. The porcupine likely didn't expect someone to follow. Once Roland was inside, he spotted the porcupine and swiftly exited to gear up for the hunt. The good news was the porcupine was resting there. The bad news was it was under a crevice. Even if he managed to shoot it with an arrow, getting the meat would be tough. He needed to check the other side, where some rock caves gave him hope. The porcupine was trickier than he expected. When he went down, it darted to the other side. He had to try from above. He shot an arrow at the porcupine, which darted back to the rock crevice. Roland jumped down to track it. Noticing the tracks on the rocks, he realized it hadn't gone far. He just needed to wait for it to bleed out. The challenge was retrieving it. He reached in, and luckily, his arms were long enough. After some effort, he finally pulled out the porcupine. It was quite a big one, enough to last him more than a week. He was in a great mood. It proved he had some skills. Facing the porcupine, he felt completely at ease. His confidence in finishing the 100-day challenge soared. Roland was so thrilled he was speechless. The camera then turned to Amos, who was watching the weather, hoping the lake would free soon. But the lake hadn't frozen much. He worried he might miss out on ice fishing. Music was his only comfort. Despite his nearly frozen fingers, he couldn't stop playing. It was too difficult to put down, and there wasn't much else to do. His food supplies were almost gone, and even the firewood was running out. If this continued, his body might not last the week. He was in dire need of food and decided to try fishing by the shore, hoping his handmade hooks would be effective. Amos found the winter environment very challenging. He had no experience with it, and the mental pressure was immense. He cast his line into the water, hoping a catch would lift his spirits and boost his confidence to finish the challenge. Although there are many people better than me, only a few were selected, so I need to try harder. 
I aim to win the prize money and celebrate at home. I don't know about the other contestants, but Amos here might not see the end of the competition. He probably won't catch any fish by the end. He doesn't even know how long he's been fishing here. So far, no fish have bitten. Have they all gone to the deep sea to stay warm? Suddenly, he feels a tug on the line. Amos quickly pulls harder, but the fish has already escaped. The good news is, there are still fish around. Before it gets away, he quickly casts the hook again. These fish are smarter than he expected. Amos keeps trying until nightfall without success. He's feeling really down and heads back to his shelter to rest. All the food in the shelter is gone, with no chance to replenish. Amos doesn't know how much longer he can hold on. It's time to think about going home. Meanwhile, Cowley is busy dealing with a porcupine. He hasn't seen this much fat in a long time. His body really needs it, and he feels he can keep going, considering the lake hasn't frozen over yet. He can't fish on the ice. Luckily, with this porcupine meat, he can last a bit longer. What Cowley didn't expect was... The porcupine's organs had issues. The liver was worse than he thought, covered in white spots. Does anyone know what's going on? Whether the porcupine was sick or unhealthy, eating this meat is risky. He doesn't know what to do. The organs are definitely off limits, but will it affect the meat if he doesn't eat? He'll starve. If he does and there's a problem, the show will force him out. Cowley is really torn. Would you risk eating that meat? On day 55 of the challenge, Roland feels it's getting colder outside. Even with enough firewood, Roland worries it won't last through the night. It's so cold that even the stones are frozen. To keep the shelter from collapsing, he has to clear the snow, despite the cold. It also boosts his morale. If he says he doesn't miss his family, it would be a lie. Roland wants to be with them. But given his current situation, he has a strong shot at winning. So, despite the hardships, he must persevere. Winning would improve my family's life. Now, let's check on Gillian. He also prefers staying in during this cold weather. It's better to stay warm and hungry than to freeze outside. Yesterday's ice fishing was tough. Today, I just want to stay in the shelter. There are still some fish left, so I'm not worried about starving. I wonder if the fish tastes better after he rubs his feet. Gillian keeps pushing himself. He thinks he can finish this challenge if he keeps telling himself that daily. Gillian is sure he can do it. I don't know if it's the fish or his feet, but now he has a splitting headache and his body is getting weaker. Gillian's emotions are crumbling once more. With no fish and a pounding headache, he feels this isn't a way to live. He insists it's just the smoke causing his tears, not crying. The faulty chimney fills the shelter with smoke, making it hard for Gillian to keep his eyes open. Roland appears to be faring well. With ample resources, he remains unworried and even feels up to stepping outside to admire the snow. He cleared the snow in the morning, but it piled up again within an hour. He's unsure if the shelter can hold up. He can only increase the fire's heat slightly. On the 56th day, Gillian has been smoked out all night. His vision is blurry, and he's unsure how much longer he can endure. The smoke is wearing him down. He can't just not light the fire. The rabbit traps are completely useless now. He'll collect them later. The day to go home is near. He longs to hug his husband. Gillian only feels somewhat better when outside. It would be best if he could make a small mistake and go home. However, while collecting the traps, he didn't see anything. Now, he can only record the scenery. It'll make a nice keepsake when he gets back. Surviving in the wild isn't easy. Gillian starts crying again. It's day 57, and Gillian is conflicted about leaving. He feels he's been here long enough. His husband must be missing him terribly. He's lost count of how many times he's cried. The pressure is overwhelming. It's almost breaking him down. Both physically and mentally, it's taken a huge toll. Most people probably couldn't last a week. As he speaks, Gillian begins to cry once more. He's unsure of the remaining contestants, but knows he's nearing his limit. He can only manage one day at a time. On the 58th day, Amos is starving and hoping the lake will freeze. But the reality is harsh, the ice won't get thick enough no matter how cold it gets. He has to stay in his shelter to keep warm. He pondered the right time to leave. After careful thought, Amos chose to quit. He assumed the crew would handle the cleanup. Unexpectedly, the shelter had its own plans and caught fire. Amos swore it was an accident. It wasn't planned. Amos couldn't extinguish the fire and had to evacuate. Ultimately, he had no choice but to leave. Luckily, he evacuated everything safely. Hopefully, Amos will return. He truly enhances the show. He was aware of the cameras. Had Amos not quit, the crew would have enjoyed watching him continue. Among the remaining contestants, I think Roland has the best chance of completing the challenge. Know the fastest way to prep bamboo? Well, you just put it in the fire and roast. This way the thorns on the surface can be easily removed, and then you just need to cut a large piece and put it in the pot. It only takes a moment. You'll get to savor a large pork knuckle. This, not as good as you. On the 64th day of the challenge, the camera turns to Cowley. 
The snow keeps falling, covering everything outside in white. Today, I'll check the traps first, hoping for some catches. We also need more firewood as winter deepens. Fetching water and firewood is increasingly tiring. The traps are buried under snow. I need to dig them out and reset them. This place is really... Mistakes happen easily. Catching that sick pig was a rare event. The innards are definitely not... Food. We have to dry the meat before trying it. Callie isn't sure if it's safe and worries it might cause issues after eating. Although the liver is inedible. But it should work fine as bait. It's so annoying to see it and not be able to eat. Going home now would be really tough. Accept the challenge, it's the 65th day. Jillian fixes the fireplace. I worked on the fireplace all evening, and now the smoke is finally under control. Consider it released. A bit better. Exactly. Go back and get well soon. Take care of your nose. Going ice fishing for grayling today. On the way, I did see. The fox's tracks. Sure enough, the tracks were nearby. Jillian thought. This might be lucky. It really needs food. Only then will there be a chance to complete. 100 day challenge. Soon, I return to my usual spot. I intended to stay there all day. I was surprised it happened so fast. A fish bit the bait. Jillian was overjoyed. He quickly grabbed a stick and stunned the fish. Today, he can finally enjoy meat again, crediting the fox for his luck. The luck that came wasn't as big as before, but it would still buy him a few more days. He quickly returned to clean the fish. Clean it up. Jillian will eat a bit each day. This way, he won't risk fainting from hunger. It's the 60 sixth day of the challenge. Roland is really bored. He began tapping a cow bone and singing. Even though I couldn't make out the words, it had to be a happy song. A fast song. Roland was as happy as a child back then. Happy times always seem so short. Time to step out and search for. Find some resources. Everything is blanketed in snow, leaving him clueless about edible options. Suddenly, he notices movement. Upon closer look, could that be a porcupine? Roland instantly perked up. Though he was not reacting much. Just barreled forward. Roland is really fierce. A stick. Handle the porcupine. He'd been anxious about the 100 day challenge. The challenge is impossible. With this porcupine meat, we'll easily survive another month. Get the bamboo ready fast. Scrub the pig well. First time catching one. I last saw one as a kid. Back then, my father trapped it and caught it. Then, he killed it with one strike. Now, I really do. When I was a kid, life was so different back then. I wish I could share it with my family. Food. The challenge has reached day 67. Jillian felt much better after eating the fish. He was tempted to eat it all at once done eating. Lately, I make sure to eat all the meat in the pot. I've been occupied weaving snowshoes on the frame. Once finished, I can walk on the snow. This will save a lot of energy and is very easy to make. If you're planning to play in the snow, this is a fantastic deal. It's truly high. Jillian very much. Missing her husband. I still come first. I've never been away from him this long before. I'm feeling more and more down. The snowshoes are nearly finished. Tomorrow when I wake up, I can give it a try. It's the 68th day of the challenge. I'm thinking about making a fur coat from rabbit skins. It would be the trendiest winter outfit. A 100% natural, handmade rabbit fur coat. Check out these clever rabbit foot buttons. I hope a manufacturer notices. And starts making them soon. I also want to wear some in winter. After showing it off, I checked the traps again. But sadly, there was nothing. I was growing weaker and weaker. If this continues, I might need to leave. He chose to risk it and eat the monkey and porcupine meat even if there are issues. At worst, I'll just get some antibiotics at the hospital. That's what I said. But I was quite anxious about handling it. I cut the meat and put it. Simmer inside the pot for safety. This time, he aims to cook it longer. To lower the risk of infection, he thinks about drinking the soup straight from the pot. Even if getting sick was worth it. This is the food I need. He quickly grabbed the porcupine fat and tasted it. It was incredibly delicious. I wished I could eat it endlessly. No matter if the meat has any issues, I just want to keep eating like this. Relying solely on the current. The food's still a bit of a stretch. Hope I can get more later. More food. How could such tasty food make him ill? On the 72nd day of the challenge, Roland is busy eating beef, even though it has no seasoning at all. He finds it quite tasty. Lately, that meat. I've been overindulging in it a bit. This led to some digestive issues, but Roland isn't too worried. Not a lot, but it's better than constant hunger. He went outside and made a fire to get rid of the porcupine, and the easiest way to do that was to roast it on the fire. This way, the quills can be easily removed. Just be careful with the fire. You don't want to burn the meat. This method really works for cleaning it up. It'd be easier if nothing unexpected came up. I'm sure I'll finish the 100-day challenge this time. It's time to plan how to use the prize money. Maybe get a bigger house and take the whole family on a month-long vacation. The rest of the money can be saved for the kid's education. He feels quite happy with his life and hopes to see his family soon. His family soon to share. I'm here. The interesting things encountered in the wild, especially hunting that bull. It's definitely a story worth telling forever. The porcupine's nearly dealt with here. Although it looks pretty dirty on the outside. But the meat smells amazing. I just need to cut a big piece and stew it. Roland's been at it for ages. Finally, he can eat. It's well cooked. First, I'll indulge. Let's try cooking a pork knuckle. This bite is incredibly tasty. He thinks this is way better than beef, especially the fat. It's simply a delicacy. I feel completely revived. If I could eat this every day in the wild. Roland considered offering it too. The production team. Bankruptcy isn't even an issue. Life keeps improving. He never thought he would be this comfortable. 
On the 74th day of the challenge, he considered using porcupine quills for death. I must admit, it looks pretty good. I could use this later. I can fix my clothes with this. Surviving on only porcupine meat is hard. Making it to the end of the challenge is hard. I should look for food. I first considered stockpiling more firewood. But I'm really weak. I work briefly, and I'm already worn out. My shoulders feel battered. He can't pinpoint the issue. There was an issue. After undressing and inspecting closely, I eventually discovered it. Porcupine thorns pierced into the skin. No wonder it felt so painful at this angle. Handling it isn't easy. I have to use tweezers and take my time. The quill is fully stuck now. There is no way but to cut it with a knife. If now. Having someone to help would be great. After several attempts. Finally got it out. Feeling. Feeling better now, but still puzzled about how that quill got in. He needs to quickly gather more firewood. If he wins the money. This way, my parents can retire earlier. Retirement shouldn't be a concern. I must double my efforts. On the 75th day, Roland went to the shore to get water. It's already freezing over. It's really slick to walk on. He's just afraid of falling into the water if he can help it. I really didn't want to come and take the risk. And after a while, Roland's clothes became wet. Luckily, it's not a major issue. Once I clean up, I can stew the meat again. This is the last piece of beef. Roland plans to chop it up and put it directly into the pot. To stew. Suddenly, she notices some bite marks on it. Oh boy. Even in the cold, mice are still stealing food. She's concerned about the remaining meat. The fatty parts are already gone. She must figure out how to handle the mice. Even the pork is gone. How could such a large piece of fat vanish? Roland is furious enough to tear down the shelter. She's set on eliminating the mice. For now, she can only bag the meat. Hoping this will help keep the mice away. The challenge has reached day 76. Jillian has a bit of fish daily. But it doesn't truly fill her up. It's just a way to curb her cravings. She misses her husband terribly and wants to go home for a hug. After breakfast, I started again. Ice fishing. If I catch a big fish, I might be able to complete the challenge. Sitting on the ice is really tough. I need to get up and warm myself every couple of hours. Jillian couldn't sense any fish. Then there was a tug. I didn't expect the fish to break free. I couldn't hold back my emotions and burst into tears. If I had caught that big fish, I could definitely finish this challenge. But reality is so cruel. That fish is gone for good. Back at the shelter, Jillian felt extremely down. He felt like a complete failure. How could he not catch such a big fish? It's really too cold outside. I don't. I don't want frostbite. It's still chilly by the fire. Maybe it's time to consider heading home. Now let's look at Roland. She had initially just coming to fetch water. Didn't think I'd see the lake freeze. Maybe in a few days we can go ice fishing. He finds life here tough. I like it more and more. On the 78th day, Callie dreamt of food again and felt incredibly hungry all night. Fortunately, he still had some porcupine left. The meat smells like it's cooking. The aroma of the meat made him feel that this. This is true wilderness. It's time to go for what survival should be. Let's inspect the lake ice. Given how cold it is, I hope we can go soon. Ice fishing. The ice still looks a bit thin. Callie isn't. I really want to keep going. Then I could set up a gill net by the shore. If it were, I can avoid going out there. A cold wind blows over the ice. The ice isn't very thick right now. Crack it open, grab some water and return to eat. Just wondering, aren't you wearing these shoes anymore? Back at the shelter, Callie feels his toes. Something's wrong. I quickly removed my shoes to see if it was a small stone. He dunked his head in, not expecting his toes to be frostbitten. Even warming them by the fire, a big blister had appeared. If it gets worse, he might need to amputate his toes. Callie has never had frostbite before. He doesn't understand why only his toes are affected. With 22 days to go, he's scared he won't make it. On the day of completion, Callie isn't willing to risk her toes for the prize. It seems she might. She declared her exit early. Now it's just a question of when Callie will quit. I know the crew. Callie really wants to complete this challenge. He aims to show that women are just as strong as men in this challenge. For now, all I can use. Fire to roast. Praying for a change. I hope things improve soon. By day 80 of the challenge, Jillian feels he won't make it. There's nothing to eat. I'm growing weaker and weaker. I'm still fighting off a cold. I'm scared I might faint. My morale kept sinking. Jillian just wanted to go home and hug her husband. It seems he won't make it to the end either. Can we end this sooner? Congrats to Roland on the win. And Jillian. Considering fishing to boost my mood. I have to say, these snowshoes are really good. Walking with them saves a lot of energy. Jillian gazes at the view below. Even if he catches a fish again. How's it going? Won't last a full hundred days. I should just head home now and see my husband. He quickly called the producers. I wish I could catch some fish. I think my body could last until the end of the challenge. But mentally, I just can't take it anymore. Now, I just want out. Open here. I spot the crew coming. Coming over. Killian's emotions. Couldn't keep it in. She felt it was just too hard for her. If only her husband were with her. Here. Staying put for a bit. Years are not a problem. If I were alone, holding on this long is already a big achievement. After Killian left, only Callie and Roland remain in the challenge. Callie has a toe injury. So Roland must try to succeed. On the 81st day of the challenge, Roland is now fully geared up and ready to go fishing. If she hadn't hunted the muskox, she thinks she would have quit and gone home long ago. Now she can. Check out the shore.
The ice is sturdier than expected. Roland walks on it without any issues, trying to reach the deeper waters where the fish are more abundant. Some might say, Roland already ate a muskox. Why is she still working so hard to find food? The main reason is the muskox had almost no fat. Which doesn't provide much energy, not even as much as a single fish. So even after getting the muskox, Roland still needs to fish through the ice for food. But the fish weren't biting, leaving her empty-handed. On the 82nd day of the challenge, Callie hasn't given up. He still wants to keep going. The lake has completely frozen over, so now he can fish on the ice. Hopefully, this will bring. Callie didn't go too far, just found a spot and broke a hole in the ice. His body now is extremely weak. Even a little exercise leaves me breathless. Porcupine and rabbit hairs cover the hook. The main bait is the porcupine's kidney. I hope for water. The fish might bite if Callie can catch one. He thought catching a fish would let him rest more in the shelter. Lying down might help my toe heal. But reality is just so cruel. The fish remain uncaught. His toe is in severe pain, and Callie is deeply concerned. She's running out of time. Not much left. I just need to go back and rest. It's now the 83rd day, and Roland is using an axe to break the ice for water. The nighttime temperatures are frigid. Roland keeps adding firewood. Fire outside. Just need to drink more hot water. Otherwise, especially, don't take it lightly. Be wary of fever. It keeps getting tougher. The harder it gets. Conversely, Callie's condition is far worse. Her toe injury is worsening. But she still wants to continue. Keep pushing on. Breaking the ice for water every day takes up a lot of time and energy. During this period, my toe hurt terribly. We're now on day 84 of the challenge. Roland's shelter is still quite warm. But cold air seeps in through the door, turning steam into frost inside. She can't clean it all up. In just one night, it ended up like this. She realizes she needs to scoop the ice chunks from her hat and gather more. The firewood is piling up. Such days. Continuing is truly tough. Actually, Roland's already. We have enough firewood. Yet, I keep gathering it daily. It's certainly enough to last the 100 days. But Roland just. I don't think it's enough. I've been watching constantly. Even with more firewood at night. The cold. This place isn't meant for everyone. Very few can last here. The challenge is still far from over. It's been a grueling two weeks. Roland clenched her teeth and kept going. Making it to dawn was a real struggle. The first thing I did upon waking up was. Take out the berries. Because we typically eat beef. They've remained untouched. I thought I could have a feast. But the berries all moldy. I should have expected this outcome. The only thing I can still eat right now is oxtail. Roland plans to cook a big pot of oxtail stew, despite its unpleasant smell. But its nutritional value. Very high. Roland directly. He swallowed it in one go. It tasted a bit sour, but as long as it was edible, it was fine. It's day 87, and I'm feeling pretty good. I don't know how many contestants. I hope everyone can stay strong. I just don't know if these hundred. How do you divide the prize money? By myself. I remember my childhood days with family. Those days were truly happy i'd love to invite them over and join us let's see time to look the trap was initially set up to catch failed to catch it i didn't expect the trap would catch one thank you nature for the gift if my toes weren't hurt i would have been quite confident i can complete the challenge use your time wisely cook it thoroughly eating meat always boosts morale roland thinks this weather getting a good night's sleep is tough i need to get up periodically to add firewood otherwise the cold will wake you up it's tough living here stay in the shelter to keep warm she thinks she can last with the resources she has, though fetching water is a bit of a hassle. It's snowing now, visibility is poor, and Roland fears. Make the most of this moment. While you can still navigate, hurry up and leave. Roland doesn't know how long she's been walking here. Finally, he reaches the edge of the forest. Next time, I shouldn't venture out in such a situation. On the 88th day, Callie prepares her gear to catch fish. But her fingers were so frozen that weaving was painfully slow. She could only check her fishing lines, growing more disheartened. Callie waited for ages. Unfortunately, no fish came by. Her toes started hurting badly again. She had to return to the shelter to rest for a while. For now, she could only drink bone broth. To warm up a bit, Callie felt she was reaching her limit. She wished her toes would last until the end. But the next morning, her toes hurt so much that even putting them near the fire didn't help. If this continued, she might actually need an amputation. After a lot of thought, she called a doctor. It was worse than she had feared. There was no way she could continue. It was such a pity. She was just 11 days away from completing the challenge. For safety reasons, the show had to send her back. Callie had known since her toes got injured that she wouldn't. Unable to finish the challenge. As considering leaving. Now let's look at Roland's progress. The challenge has reached the 90th day. Roland still has some food left. She roasted the oxtail over the fire. Though there wasn't much meat, it still satisfied her craving. It is enough to satisfy the hunger, and it is getting closer and closer to the end of the challenge. Roland continues his daily search for food. He doesn't plan to starve until the end. She even had the mood to make a Christmas tree. The Christmas tree. All I can say is Roland really earned the prize. Whether it's her own strength 
or just good luck. I can't believe it, but I've reached the hundredth day. Roland reflects on her tough journey and waits for the crew to announce her achievement. She wonders if her family will it come over? I really feel very. I really miss them. While Roland was resting in the shelter, he suddenly heard his family calling out to him. Roland was thrilled, his son was in disbelief that he had finished the challenge. Now we can plan it. How to spend the prize money. Roland and her family share stories about life here. There's even some oxtail marrow to eat. Do you think Roland could keep pushing forward? Can he last another hundred days? I wonder who will challenge next. Let's all just wait and see.